Grace and peace, grace and peace. Good night, good night. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. to God. Fully submit to God. Give their all to God. Give their everything to God. And God will begin to pour into them. Do a quick work. Elevate them quickly because there is a submission there. There is a surrender there. We struggle with pride. We struggle with anger. We struggle with various things because these demons are knocking on the door. God said sin lieth at the door. And for some of us, these doors are wide open. Grace and peace. Mic check, mic check. Clubhouse, can you hear me? I can't hear Dr. Wayne. Dr. Wayne, are you speaking? I can't hear you. Okay, let me back out. Hold on. <coughs> Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you now, God. Ekarabasato. Bless your name, God. What's going on, y'all? What's up? What's up? Gabrielle, blessings. Gabrielle Taylor, God bless you. Ashley, what's good? Those coming in on TikTok, what's going on? I see you out here. I see you, I see you. Danielle, what's going on? God bless you. Everybody, my peoples, my peoples, what's going on? I don't want to miss nobody out. Uh, Tracy, blessings to you. Uh, Natasha, God bless you. Jesse, what's going on? Jakira, God bless. Micah, God bless you. Hospital, can you hear me? Yes, sir, man. God, I can hear you. How you doing? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I can hear you fine. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. You want to run the background music or you want me to run it? If it's okay, can I run it tonight? Sure. How's the volume okay. so far? It's okay? You're perfect. You're perfect. Okay. Now, okay. Clubhouse, anybody with a microphone beside Prophet O, let me hear your feedback on the sound. It's good? <laughs> Marie, it's is it good. good? It's good. Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, um, tonight, tonight is a, um, a heavy topic, so there's a lot of information. You should have been taking notes all week, but if you haven't, you definitely need to take uh, notes tonight because we're going to dive into uh, the origins of spirit spouses, how they're connected to the marine kingdom, how they affect humanity, and how they exact their will on people who are undiscerning. Is that good for y'all? Dr. Wayne, quick question. I yes, think there are people waiting to join your YouTube. 
How is that possible? Oh, because I didn't go live. Come on, Jesus. Yeah. Y'all pray for me. Um, Prophet Odell in his life, but um, True Fam and your page have to go live. There you see why we need? You see why we need other eyes? Because I played that whole intro without uh, going live. I'm sorry, folks. So let me just repeat for those who, who just joined us. Uh, tonight is a heavy topic. We're going to talk about spirit spouses, how the Marine Kingdom uses them, what are their purpose, how they affect humanity and affect the lives of everybody undiscerning. Okay? So um, the first thing that I want to talk about Make sure I got it up here on the screen. In order for us to investigate spirit spouses, we have to first learn uh, the origins of it so we can adequately contextualize why it's an issue and what issues that it cause. We know that in Genesis chapter 3, 1 to 3, somebody put that in chat, please. Do I have a, a, a YouTube clubhouse moderator? I got a clubhouse moderator. What about YouTube? I need somebody in YouTube to throw the scriptures in here. Let's, I forgot to pray. Father God, we thank you because your name is great. We thank you, God, because you are the foundation of all wisdom. Lord, we bless and we honor your name because you're grateful. And Father God, we know somebody going to get free tonight, somebody with acquired the knowledge to get free, stay free, and set others free from the wickedness of the marine kingdom and spirit spouses. Father, I'm asking right now in your matchless name to uh, just, just fill me up with you, God, that every word that comes out of my mouth is not my opinion, God, but is revelatory knowledge that you want your people to have. And Lord, we thank you for doing it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, when I first, I wrote a whole book called um, The Creation of the Marine Kingdom. And I was afraid to put it out in the form that it's in because it was very controversial. And I had to repent because as we grow in knowledge and wisdom, God will reveal to us things that are not overtly written in the scriptures or things that we don't have the stomach to palate and we try to make it seem to say something else when it doesn't. This is the Faustina. Did we pull her up? Let's pull up moderators. Pull up the people that we need to pull up. Pull up M. Um, Faustina. D so in American biological science, there is something called nocturnal emission, and that simply means that's just a medical fancy name to say wet dreams. And so they will tell you any uh, young man going through puberty, that is something that they encounter. I encountered it frequently, not just in puberty, but as an adult, uh, not discerning what these things, what these these. Uh, physiological slash spiritual things meant to the human body and the condition of the human spirit. So it wasn't until I encountered uh, Kevin Ewing and he started to talk about the covenants that were established through these type of illicit sexual activities in your dreams. And I was still on the, on the, the fence about it until I prayed. I'm like, okay, if what he's saying is true, if I pray this, it cannot harm me. And I used to have them so frequently, I used to be embarrassed to tell my wife because I didn't want her to believe that she was inadequate or there was something perverse about me from a lust uh, issue. Not that I didn't have lust issues because I had issues like that before too. But when I prayed that prayer that night, I had a dream that I was being intimate with three women. I woke up and prayed the dream again, and the very same dream occurred a second time. I woke up and prayed a third time and had the very same dream. And so that is what opened the door down the rabbit hole, like what this, what this dude is saying is true. It is virtually impossible that you can come out of a dream and go back into the, the, uh, the same dream unless there's a force that is controlling your dreams for a purpose. Genesis 1, 
Verse 3 reads, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the tree, the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch, yes, lest ye die. That word touch, for all my people that got y'all Greek, uh, your concordances and your Bible dictionaries, this is the type of stuff that these Bible dictionaries slash concordances are very useful for. So the word touch used right there, when God gave Adam and Eve the prohibition, is the Hebrew word H5060 for people who want to go look that up in the future. I need somebody to put that in the chat for me. H, the H stands for Hebrew. So when you see the H, that means Hebrew. When you see the G, that means Greek. So H5060 in the Strong's Dictionary is the word Naga. And that's the prime root word for touch. To lay the hand upon for the purpose to lie with a woman, to reach. So we see that the prohibition given to Adam and Eve specifically was to avoid not only contact or conversation, but any kind of intimacy with any spiritual being. Why? Why would he tell him don't touch? Because there was a spiritual being that was in the garden. What was that spiritual being? We can go to Ezekiel chapter 14, where it talks, and even in John, where Jesus says he saw Satan fall like lightning. Well, where did he fall to? Mm. He fell into the garden. Right? Now, if you go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, somebody put that in the chat. Right? This is adult conversation that was shielded by the redactors to try to conceal. And I don't know what the purpose was, but for some reason, this is uh, 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 this is revelation that is uh, not widely discussed. And this is my thing. You can't defeat an enemy when you don't know the nature of the attacks. Genesis 3, verse 13, And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is that that thou has done? Why, why didn't he say, What is that that thou has eaten? Right? He never mentioned the word eaten. He says, What is that that thou has done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The problem with that word beguiled is that it really means seduced. Again, if you have your strong dictionary, you would know these things. I know after tonight, y'all gonna get some strong dictionary. I mean, concordances, right? So the word beguiled in that text means to seduce. We already looked and know what the word eat or naga means. It means to touch for the sake of intercourse, right? So he deceived Eve. But y'all about to clutch y'all pearls because I'm about to show you where homosexuality comes from or the introduction of homosexuality. Why is that important? God did not give rulership of the planet to Eve. He gave it to Adam. And before creation, the enemy knew that to get to men of authority, men of power, that he will normally use women. And so when you hear me say that I believe that Jezebel's first incursion in the earth was not what we read in the book of Kings, but what is happening here? Adam is under a spell. Adam is acquiescing to the overtures of Eve, although God had told him first not to mess. So if we look at Genesis chapter 3, 15 and 16, put that in the chat. It reads, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Well, who is he talking to? And between thy seed and her seed. So who is the seed of the woman? And who is this other seed that God is referring to? Come on, y'all talk back to me. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow 
and thy conception in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Don't let anybody ever tell you there's no such thing as generational curses. Has anybody been saved and had children after they were saved? Because you were speaking in tongues on your delivery table, was the pain easier? Was the curse of painful childbirth done away because you got saved? Somebody answer me. We know the answer is no. So this is a universal curse placed on humanity as a direct consequence of the sins of our foreparents, Adam and Eve. This completely changes the dynamics of the dominion that which was once possessed by Adam and therefore humanity. Adam also received the curse that would be uh, a second universal curse that the ground would no longer produce for him and therefore all humanity would now have to toil or in other words, toil for your food. Now, if we go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 and 19, put that in the chat. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat, curses the ground for thy sake. So now let's go back, two steps back, right? In going two steps back, why did Satan needs, need Adam's cooperation? Somebody ask me. Why? Because God could have just replaced Eve because the governance of the earth was given to Adam. When Adam cooperated, he subsequently abdicated his role and rulership of the planet to Satan. This is why if we go to the book of John and we go to the temptation of Jesus Christ, Satan has the audacity to say, if you, right, bow down and worship me, the Bible says that he took Jesus and showed him the kingdoms of the world and said, if you worship me, I will give you all of these kingdoms. He was able to say that be Adam, because of Adam, abdication of his authority and rulership over the earth. The second consequence to this is that. The spirit of every human child comes from the Father. Y'all hearing me? This is why Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. And this is why adoption is a big thing to God. And this is why Joseph had to atop Jesus so that he would be able to sit on David's throne as the son of David. Y'all following me? So now, we now have to go to Sodom and Gomorrah. Y'all still with me, right? So to talk about the effects of Sodom and Gomorrah, let's go to Jude chapter 1, verse 7. Yo, I prepared for this. I'm ready. Okay? Tasia, what is 2 Corinthians 4, 4? I don't know what that scripture is. You got to let us know if you're going to put scriptures in there. We got to know what you're talking about. Okay, so if I'm reading from, I don't like these other translations. Let's go to the old King James. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Say strange flesh. Strange flesh. Why is that important? Don't let nobody... Uh, completely convince you that God's destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah only had to do with homosexuality and only had to do with mistreating the poor. It had to do with a practice where the individuals that lived in Sodom and Gomorrah had sex with spirits. Y'all hearing me? That is the term strange flesh. Let me tell you what that word means. I, I had that word. This would be a good place for your Strong's Dictionary because the Greek term for another flesh or strange is um, the proper word, right, would be heteros. I hope I'm saying this right. Seems to be the exact opposite of what we would expect in the context. Homeos, meaning like manner. Heteros, meaning the opposite. That is where we get our word heterosexual. 
meaning sleeping with the opposite sex. But in this particular strange flesh context, it is talking about the copulation with angels or demons. Well, wait, wait, what are you talking about sleeping with angels? I'm glad you asked. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6. Put Genesis chapter 6 in the, in, in the chat, please. And it says, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters were born unto them. Don't let anybody tell you that this is the daughters of Seth. This is foolishness. The Son of God saw the daughters of men, and they were fair, meaning beautiful, and they took them wise of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. That is when God cut the time frame of humanity or that corrupted species. Why? Can you imagine if the Nephilim in the earthly body lived 900 years old? Mm. Right? This is why the book of Enoch tells us the other missing pieces and also corroborated in other parts of the Bible, like the book of Job chapter 1 or Job chapter 6. Don't quote me on that that the angels or the, the Nephilim, they also sinned against the animals. Right? I'm going to say something very controversial, but I know it's true. God did not create dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are the evidence of the fallen ones and their offspring producing, yeah, I think cloning just started the other day, Right? Animal and human hybrids are sometimes called chimeras. And all of the animals that God created, right? Now we'd have to go back, look at the ark and see the unclean animals and the clean animals. So with the unclean animals, they were only given uh, one and uh, two. And the, uh, the clean animals were giving, we got to go back and we got to look at it. Yes, gene splicing. So we know that. They, they, they sinned against the animals, and it wasn't just epigenetic modification or gene modification or gene splicing. This is where bestiality comes from. So if we go back and look at Sodom and Gomorrah, right? What was, why was Sodom named Sodom? Or why did we get a sing English word that means sodomy that has since been revised? The, the word sodomy, some of y'all going to get in y'all feelings, and if y'all do this, you need to stop. Sodomy includes anal sex, oral sex, and bestiality. Y'all hearing me? So the Genesis 6 angels are the watchers, as Valencia so adequately put in the chat. And so now... We see that the bloodline by which Jesus would come through, the enemies trying to corrupt it. And when perversion was found in their hearts, they, they wanted to marry women, right? This is why when I tell people God don't give people boyfriends and girlfriends, he gives them husbands and wives. That is the, uh, the dynamics that is set up in the spirit realm. So anybody that you enter, you enter into intimacy that is not under a covenant relationship, quote unquote, a marriage with God, you are still married to them, but under a different covenant, whether it be a human being, an animal, or a spiritual being. Intercourse produces marriages, and it produces covenant, and it produces offsprings. Is it sin to give oral sex to your husband? Yes. Because y'all ask, I'm going to tell y'all, yes. Right? How do we know this? From a biological perspective, the parts don't fit. And God doesn't make anything out of order. We think the word perversion, when we hear it, means all sexual perversion. But the, 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 uh, the epitome of the word, not the epitome, the uh, etymology of the word perversion simply means anything that is outside of its natural order. We're not supposed to be having oral sex. God did not create us to spill our seed or engage in these sexual covenants that opens the door to all manner of demonic activity. The truth is... We all have done it. Why, when we start to mature at, at, in our sexual age, the first thing that we want to do 
right? That's right, it doesn't create life, and it spills the seed, is to know, everybody knows, even without anybody ever telling you that oral sex is something that is outside the normal. And because we are fleshly beings and we want the perverse things growing up, right? The things that we used to say to women to get them to do it when we were teenagers, tell the truth, y'all. You're talking the truth. right, you're talking right, man of God. You're talking right. I know, the stuff we used to say. I can't repeat them things right now because we're not going to glorify them things. But I know the craziness I used to say to get them to do something that is so perverse. And keep in mind, sex out of marriage is perverse in itself. But then we take it a step further. Why is oral sex an issue? Why? Because the, the temple prostitutes, this is what they did. This is the kind of stuff that Paul was talking about. And so when you hear Christians tell you, oh, the marriage bed is undefiled, stop lying. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says, do not defile the marriage bed. Why? He won't talk to the Hebrew people, not that they didn't do it. But we, we're talking about pagans, that every exploration of their flesh is what they did. Hey, Prophet O, you didn't even tell me to come on um, TikTok. Come through, man of God, come through. Yeah, I hope they ain't over there clowning me right now. But glory to God, anyway. <laughs> All right, where is Prophet? Oh, there he is. I see you. Okay, I'm in. Okay. And so what we need to understand is we're exploring why the Marine Kingdom uses uh, this type, type of illicit sexual, sexual activity. Hold on, Hold on let me move my mic. mic. There we go this type of sexual activity to continue to ensnare humanity. Simone is telling me to calm down. You see me sweating? Hold on, Simone, hold on. Let me get my preaching rag. Okay. So, Genesis chapter 6 is the second place that we can identify that spirits did this. Right? Uh, actually, the third place because we also have to look at what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. So there are three places where God is saying that this is an issue, this is an issue, this is an issue. So why is it an issue, right? And what other scriptures can we use to corroborate that this was a known thing in the ancient Near East? Yeah, my microphone has been trying to fall off this boom arm. I think the threading is going bad. Come on, just hang out till tonight. We can fix you tomorrow. Y'all stop praying. The devil messing with the stuff. He mad. We can expose his stuff tonight. Hold on a second. I got to hold this in my hand. That's what I'm doing. Because we're going to teach this thing tonight. And we're going to pray. Yandi mare beke kadala bo sakaya. Okay. So I think the threaded part is going bad. And I have a backup. Boom. But we ain't got no time for that right now. Come on. Holy Ghost, we need you. We need you. I know this is something that seems simple. I'm going to hold on a second, y'all. Let me try one more time. I'm going to hold on a second, y'all. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, God. Rebebe kalandi koro bobo bobo, randandi koro bobo kote de 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 beki koro bosi tarabakaya. Yes, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Urandi karaba baba kata labasa. Re de 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 beki koro bobo si ta da da ba ya. Hold on a second. Let me grab back up microphone. Robo soto robo se te de be kada ba sa ta ya. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Robo boko tele beke. Randi handara ba sa ta. 
Raba baba korobo bo si karaba sandeke ya. Rebe ya ko bahaya. Redi ma rebe kenda diadaba si talabo soto. Raba basata. Raba basi ke be bendi korobo bo bo kondi ke dede bendi adama se. Rebe ke be katalaba sata ya. Rosoto robo bo bo kote de 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 be ki karaba. Come on and pray y'all. Come on and pray. Raba basata la basata. Rende de de karabandi kolobo se yadaba se yadaba so. Can y'all hear me? We good? Loud and clear, we sir. <laughs> Glory to God. All right. Cash out me some microphone money. Um, so we have three different places where we can see that the agenda to use intimacy to establish covenants with humanity is there. Right? And so you may ask me now, how does this relate? But before we go to how it relates to our life today, let's look at John chapter 8, uh, verse 44. Put that in the chat, please. And that reads, Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth because there is no truth in him. He speaketh a lie. He speaketh his own for he is a liar and the father of it. If we go to verse 45, that reads, because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of ye convinceth me of sin or convicteth me of sin? And if I said the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God, here is God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. And they answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well, and thou art a Samaritan and has a devil. Right? Jesus answered and said, I have not done, I, am, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye dishonor me. I think I missed the scripture. Let me go back to 43 and see if I missed it. How did I miss this? Okay. 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 I'm sorry, folks. Take your time, sir. It's okay. We got to go to verse. Let's go to verse 36. And it says, if the son, therefore, in the book of John, chapter 8, shall not make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word have no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father and do, and ye do that what ye have seen from your father. And they answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication in all H-E double hockey sticks. Why did they use we not be born of fornication? We have one father, even God, because this was known in the near East, in, the, in, in antiquity about the dual nature of humanity the seed of the woman and the seed of Satan. This goes back, this is a whole week ago for like three days just on this. But they were saying that they were not the seed of Satan. And God is saying, yes, you are. Jesus is saying, yes, you are. Right? Why is that important? Because in Jude chapter 1 verse 6, put that in the chat. And that reads, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness 
unto the judgment of the great day. So this is saying that Jesus had bound the original perpetrators of Genesis chapter 6 for what they did to humanity, the original watchers. Okay, so now you may say, Wayne, how is this important to me? How is this relating to all the spirit spouse stuff? I'm going to wrap it up for you. Okay? Now, we have been told, and I can't say that I agree, because I believe sometimes, and listen, I, I want to say this as humbly as possible. Right? What we read in the scriptures... Right? I consider Paul the greatest apostle that ever walked the face of the earth, filled with revelation. But could it be, and Prophet, you're going to have to answer me, that Paul didn't know everything? And now, as the day becomes even more darker, we're getting revelations that perhaps Paul didn't have access to simply because of where he was on God's eschatological uh, timeline? Because some of these things are not explicitly written in the Bible unless you search it out under the leading of the Holy Ghost. Men that have gone before me that have taught this and spoken about this, they would deride and ostracize because I believe the church was not ready yet to tackle the whole spirit spouse agenda. I have never heard this preached anywhere, and I've been going to church since I had ashy ankles as a baby. Right? <laughs> and so when Prophet Odlin and myself and others talk about these things, this is the taboo sexuality that the church don't, doesn't want to address. I remember um, Christian Cultural Center. I went to a men's conference there, and I said, and this is one of the preachers that answered the question. I had a woman, a friend of mine, that when these spirits attack her, she would actually show me the handprints on her thighs. How is that possible? And he made a joke. Oh, you, you, you must be a true man of God to not... I'm like, fill with perversion. Didn't even want to talk about this, the reality of, of, of what I'm talking about. And the truth of the matter, there's not a human being on the planet that has not encountered anything like this, even if you don't remember. Why? It is part of the strategy to establish covenants with humanity. And as we talk about this before we pray, we're going to tell you why they do this. Go to Job chapter 26, verse 5. It's either five or four. I just want to make sure I got the right scripture. Okay. Job 26 verse 5 says, Dead things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. Well, well stop the press. Vicky Vale. What are the dead things that are created? And who are the inhabitants of the waters that are creating these dead things? Anybody else want to ask that question? Think about this. I'm going to give you another scripture to add some context to it. Go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 13. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on, bear with me here. Revelation chapter 20, verse 13 reads, let's start at 12. And it says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. Say, the books were opened. The books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. So wait, 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 hold on. There's two books being opened. And first there was a first book open, and then the book of life was opened, right? Now watch this. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So the first book is going to be the judgment of the dead. What dead? Genesis chapter 26, uh, Job chapter 26, verse 5 says, And 
the dead things were formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. So the inhabitants of the waters are dead and they create dead things. And so your next question before we go, before we go past the scripture is this. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Didn't Job chapter 26 verse 5 tell us that the sea creates dead things? Mm-hmm and the inhabitants thereof. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Hold on, I'm confused. I'm confused. So you're saying that the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Ain't that like three different dead people or things we're talking about? So that means death and hell and the sea, the dead is not synonymous. When I read this without coming to the knowledge of this, I used to think it was those who died in the seas. But it doesn't matter where you die, you have two resting places. Well, one is not a place of rest, one is a place of torment. And verse 14 says, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. I got one more scripture I want to show you, and then we're going to talk about the symptoms. God is giving me scriptures while I'm talking to y'all. If we go to Revelation 21, verse 1. Right? It says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. This is John the Revelator's um, vision. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. How often have we read that and miss that last portion of verse 1? And there was no more sea. Why? That is the total destruction of the marine kingdom. They will never rise again. And so when people tell you that there's um, there's no such thing as generational curses, I got one scripture for them. Let me find it for you. Keep putting these scriptures in the chat so you can go back um, and go back and study these things out. Right? In Revelation 22, verse 3, it says, And there shall be no more curses, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. So until the day that the new Jerusalem uh, comes down from heaven, curses will exist. So you can be saved, Holy Ghost fill, and be under a curse. Don't let nobody fool you and tell you anything otherwise. I've just given the scripture that proves it, right? So now, all of the foregone information that we talked about, how does this affect us? Who is targeted by the Marine Kingdom? Everybody is targeted by, by the Marine Kingdom. But it seems like women are the prime target of the marine kingdom. Why? They are the incubators of life. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, something I said about disagreeing with the terminology of incubus and succubus, let me tell you why I disagree with it being two separate beings. I believe it's a shape-shifting being that collects both the sperm and the egg and it's the incubation process or the uh, the IVF uh, section of, of the kingdom of darkness. And this is where Job, 25, Job 26 verse 5 tells us what the incubus and succubus does and why they do it. They want to populate the ranks of de- with dead things, with soulless, mindless automa- uh, uh, autotoms, right? that they send out with these 
uh, covenants and curses that they established to carry out the curses that they established with you. So when we when we chop them up, kill them, send them to the pit, they replenish the ranks by coming up to our realm and having intercourse with us to collect specimens. Those specimens are also used to put on dem demonic altars in the waters. Y'all hear me? And this is why they do it, because we know that anybody that you're intimate with, whether it be a, a demon, a person, or animal, you are in covenant with that entity, right? And what? why else do they do this? Because we know that these this copulation produces spiritual beings. We had a young lady in church today that was giving birth to spiritual babies while she was going through deliverance. I kid you not. This is real stuff. And every human being I know for certain, even as safe people, they still try to attack us and reestablish these covenants. I guarantee you, many of the people that we've been doing deliverances uh, with tonight, every time we do deliverance, wow, I don't have no, where's my restream? Right? When the night comes, the enemy's trying to reestablish those covenants. Is that happening to anybody else? Bear with me, y'all. I know I'm on target because now the technical stuff is appearing. Bear with me, 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 bear with me. Okay. Bear with me, y'all. Here we go. And so their goal is to establish and reestablish these covenants to make sure that they have access to our finances. For women, all gynecological stuff, anything that you're having, if you're here tonight and you're having issues with your female parts, it is because of spirit-spouse interaction. Fibers, anything that grows out of order to prevent uh, 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 conception, is spirit spouse interaction, barrenness, being unmarried. All these things are the works of spirit spouses. Why? When it comes to women and men, if you find yourself being the greatest invention since sliced bread, you spend time in yourself, you become Proverbs uh, 31, you've done everything that God has told you to do, except explore the fact that there may be a spirit spouse that is standing in the way of meeting your kingdom spouse. Let me tell you what they do. They don't want to share you. They don't want to be the dude or the chick on the side. They want to make sure that they have access to you, number one, for their perversion, and number two, to continue to establish these covenants in your life. And by exposing all of this, now you know the source of uh, marital breakdown gynecological sickness and if you're married and you're having marital issues the number one source of this marital issue that there's a spirit spouse whether it be generational or a one that comes and goes that is active in your marital life to keep your marriage on the rocks why because they're trying to usurp their own government on top of the government of god by taking control of the main first government that God has established. How do we know this? The Bible says that a man would leave his parents and cleave to his wife and the two become one flesh. When the two becomes one flesh, the word used there means in order for it to be separated, there's a part of a person that goes with one person and with the other. That is where we get our disassociative personalities. This is where we get our soul ties. This is where we get uh, sometimes multiple personality disorders. This is where we pick up covenants or curses based on people that we've been intimate with. Because if you're married to them, this is why you need to investigate. Before you get married, I wish I had known this. Investigate the spiritual lineage of your spouse. Because that is going to determine what covenants come with the two becoming one flesh. So now if we extrapolate those values, right? Everybody that we've been intimate with and every curse that is on their bloodline, unless we spiritually divorce them, it's not connected to us. 
Another thing that the spirit spouse does is produce spirit, spirit babies. And as we've established, many of us are dealing with financial issues, and the financial issue is because in the spirit realm, we are tasked with the upkeep of these spiritual babies. So therefore, our finances are attacked. I know I'm going to help you out tonight. Come on, Jesus. People are going to be free tonight. And so, if we look at now the symptoms of being under this type of attack, how many of y'all are dreaming about rivers and oceans and being under waters and, and being able to swim under the water? How many of y'all are having dreams about swimming? Right? How, how many of y'all having issues, marital issues, right? How many of y'all are unmarried, looking for married marriage? For the women, you become Proverbs 31. And for the men, the Bible says, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing and obtain it, uh, favor from the Lord. How many of you are having dreams about snakes and serpents? How many of you are having issues with your prayer life and your fasting? How many of you have lost babies, have had miscarriages? How many of you have dreamt of giving birth or feeding or breastfeeding babies in your sleep? Uncontrollable sexual urges, unexplained failures. These are some of the main symptoms that you're under Marine Kingdom attack. Y'all with me? So what's the solution? What do we have to do? We have to repent from all known sin and flee rebellion. We have to completely surrender your life or rededicate your life to Christ. See, this is the thing where people uh, find themselves in a pickle. You can't want to be delivered more than you want Jesus because the wanting... life to Christ and in the surrendering your life to Christ as Faustina talked about last night the salvific effect is I'm saved I'm being saved and I will be saved and you cannot separate deliverance from salvation this is why we have a church load of people that are in bondage they've been saved 30 years and they never heard the word marine kingdom they've never heard the word spirit spouse but yet all of these things are an active part of their lives. This is why Christians are constantly in lack of poverty. This is why the church is sick. If our God is the healer, why are we sick? Because many of our sicknesses are spiritual, and we're not dealing with it from the right perspective. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. God, hearing me. Thank you, Jesus. You got to get rid of of all of your cursed objects. So let me tell you right now, and y'all gonna just have to get in your feelings, but I'm gonna tell y'all the tree, truth. If you are a woman and you wear wigs, hair pieces, and weaves, you will never be completely delivered. Never. Because you're wearing their stuff. You have their stuff. If you're completely enamored with jewelry and, and anything that can, can be considered vanity, until you strip yourself of the narratives of the marine kingdom, you will never be free. You will never be 100% free because you got their stuff. I'm just telling y'all what I know, not only from Revelation, but from doing these sessions, okay? Medusa always hangs out with Jezebel. And Jezebel always hangs out with witchcraft. So if you know that you got witchcraft in your life, somewhere along the line, them other two culprits is there. Whether they've been exposed or not, we're going to expose them jokers tonight, but they are there. Because women are the primary... How do I say this? You guys are under the greatest attack from the Marine Kingdom. The greatest attack. The narratives them fooling with your beauty, right? Adopting uh, things that God didn't intend for us to have or do. Telling God that his creative prowess is not good enough, but I believe with the Marine, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to get the lashes. I'm going to get the weave. I'm going to get the filler in my lip. I'm going to get a BBW and all that stuff. And here's the thing. Let me help y'all. When you stand before God on Judgment Day, none of that stuff is there. None of that stuff is present. So why are we doing these things? Because we've been 
inculcated. We've been taught. We believe. How I know this? Because when we were 12, 13, and 14, ain't nobody had to tell us that we was cute. We know we were cute. We had no eyelashes and we had no weaves, but we were cute. Tell the truth. But now, Christian women have gone the ways of the world that everything they do in relations to fashion, we do the same thing. Why do you think Jezebel painted her face? Uh oh. When Jehu was arriving, right? We got the Jehu anointing for the Jezebels tonight. And I'm not speaking of individuals, I'm speaking of spirits. She started to paint her face to disguise her many faces. Come on, y'all. And so this is how we know that all of these spirits are working in conjunction for one goal, that we would miss the mark permanently and not make it into the rest. There are many of us who think we're saved and we're not because we have turned away from God's standard and accepted the standard of Michael Todd and all these other clowns that's preaching uh, salvation without repentance, salvation without accountability, salvation without uh, humility, salvation without sacrifice. We want a God that gave it all, right? But we don't want to give up nothing. Come on, come on. And this is why we're stuck. This is why we're stuck. This is why we can't be completely free. Y'all not even ready to have the conversation about fashion and about your bags. I know y'all love y'all bags. I see them in church all the time, the Uwe Vuittons and the Uchis, right? Y'all ain't gonna give that up. Why? Because our identity is tied up in your material possessions, which means that you have abdicated who God says you are for what somebody else says you are. This is why you have people chasing paper, chasing money, chasing cars, chasing houses, because they believe that the acquiring of these material possessions establish an identity that God doesn't approve. God don't care about your car. He cares about your heart. He doesn't care about your house. He cares about your heart. He doesn't care about how many bags you got. He cares about your heart. And I'm going to say something, and many of us are going to be in their feelings, but I'm sorry, this is not intentional to hurt anybody's feelings. You know why? We as... Jesus. Why we languish in lack in poverty? I did the math. A woman over the stage of her lifetime that does her nails, what, twice a week? That's $42,000, $43,000. How much does it cost to get your hair done? Extrapolate those numbers over your lifetime. Do the math. And so as long as you continue to put your money in the marine kingdom, you cannot receive a blessing from God the way that he wants to bless you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Anybody you spend your money with, some of us still drinking Starbucks, so y'all do too much. Come on, come on. Starbucks is owned by the Marine Kingdom. Come on. Right? Balenciaga. What's the root word in Balenciaga? Bail. And so a lot of these fashion houses, a lot of these designs come straight from the waters. Dolce & Gabbana. Y'all not ready for this conversation. It's going to be a, have to be a whole other room about this. It's deeper than we think. And that's why we can't be free, because we will not let go the vanity. We will not let go the makeup. The term makeup is deceiving in itself. This is why God can't find you, because you're made up to look like a mermaid. You're made up to look like a siren. So when God is looking for you in the cool of the day, he can't find you. Because your image, which is the image of God, has been obscured. Because the world tells us we're not beautiful unless we look like this. Our hair is not the right texture unless we look like this. Unless we look like the Kardashians, who are all witches, we're not beautiful. Unless we have the right bumps in the right places, we're not beautiful and we're not acceptable. On Judgment Day, any no, no body alteration is going to be there with you. Your piercings and your tattoos, that's going to be an issue. I know people disagree with me on that, but I'm telling you, that's a problem. All these things come from the Marine Kingdom. And I'm done. Profit all. Well, just drop the mic and walk away. Man. <laughs> it was a mic drop moment. <laughs> Wow. Wow. I don't have much uh, I don't have much to say after that. 
um, I would say from from my experience, um, I remember when I was in church, I was in, I want to say the second ministry um, since I've been saved at the time. And, um, and I shared this story before. Um, I remember where I used to get tormented at night. Demons used to come in my room. I used to go to sleep, well, fall asleep with clothes on and wake up naked, bed wet, and I ain't peeing in the bed. Y'all know what I'm saying? Bed soaking wet. And that was a recurring thing for years. And I got enough boldness to finally tell somebody about it. And at the time I told the bishop of the church and I went to him in private. I said, hey man, this is happening. So on, you know, so on and so on. This is happening. This is going on. And all he said to me was, oh, there's some perversion there. And he just walked away. And he just left me to deal with that. And I never got the help until later. But I can recall, I never shared this part of my uh, testimony, but I can recall hearing voices as I'm laying in the bed, they would say sexual things to me. And I'm like, am I hearing correct? Like, am, am I hearing things? They would say, I'm not gonna repeat it, but they would say stuff to me. And suddenly I would just fall asleep. And I would wake up and I could not recall what happened. So this stuff is not black and white in the scriptures, but this stuff takes place. This stuff happens. And for years I suffered. And I remember even, um, I remember a few times, even after I got saved, the Lord would always use me in a mighty way. Then that night I would get attacked. This is before mm -hmm. I knew about deliverance. I would get attacked and I would wake up my bed as well. I'm like, yo, what is going on? Or I'll be half sleep and I f it's like something is controlling my hands. Y'all know what I'm saying? And that would happen. I'm like, yo, like, and I, I used to get so upset. I was frustrated because I strived to live right. I was careful about what I watched, but you know, doing what a believer should do. But this was a recurring thing for some time. And it's not until I began to seek the Lord and I went through deliverance, and that's when the light clicked. Like, this is spiritual. What I'm dealing with is not natural, but it's spiritual. And for years, I suffered. And I had no one to help me because this stuff was not taught in church. And, and this really bothered me because I had no one to really talk to. But what the enemy does, spirit spouses, what they do is they tend to lay dormant. And when you begin to exceed or you get close to exceeding mm -hmm. that point where they don't want you to reach, right? That threshold, they pull you backwards. You will have a dream. You will have a demonic encounter. And you may wake up and you may not remember. But me, I had evidence because my bed used to be wet. And I ain't peeing the bed. And for years, I suffered. Until I went through deliverance. And I began to cry out to God. God, show me what is going on. And I began to pray against it. Then I'm like, wow, wait, wait a minute. It stopped. It's not happening anymore. And looking back, the enemy affected my marriage at one point. You know, mm -hmm. of course, we loved each other. You know, like, that's my boo. But we would fight over the littlest things. You know, things wasn't right, you know, at home. I'm like, yo, but she loved me. I love her. But once I begin to tackle spirit spouses, I notice, you know, a change in my marriage as well. So this stuff is not to be taken lightly. Like, you can't, well, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. No, everyone needs deliverance and the thing about it is you can have more than one spirit, spiritual spouse it's not just one it's not just incubus it's multiple i'm in these sessions and i will always ask them are you married to her are you married to him yes 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 i'm dang that just taking advantage of this poor soul but this stuff takes place in these sessions also what the enemy would do is you could be minding your business, living for Jesus. They will come to you in the dreams. They will establish covenants with you in your dreams. 
So when you just wake up and go about your day, you don't cancel dreams. You do no self-deliverance. You got a whole spirit spouse. And you're believing God for different things, but things are, you know, not moving like it should. God will still bless you. We're not going to sit here and say God won't bless you. God will still bless you. Doors will still open. But areas of your life are affected. I could recall it was so hard for me to recall my dreams for a minute, for, for a long time. I could not recall my dreams. Preaching, praying, prophesying. I could not recall my dreams. I'm so easy to forget. It's like my mind was scattered. I began to shift my prayers by the spirit of God, by revelation. Now I'm able to recall my dreams. And if I can't, I'm fighting before I get off the, get, get up from the bed. Angels of the Lord, go and recover my dreams in Jesus' name. Come on. But this stuff needs to be talked about. And we got to be very careful what we do in the bedroom. Because we open up these doors. We open up these doors. And I'll be the first to tell you, I rebuked my wife when she told me oral sex was a sin. I said, no, uh-uh, God did not tell me that. You ain't gonna, hey, hey, you ain't gonna stop my fun. Come on, come on, no. <laughs> and then I humbled myself and I prayed before God. God, if this is true, please tell me. 95, that's a big number, but 95% of us, we don't do that. What we do is we listen yeah. to somebody in the pulpit. Oh, the bed can't be defiled. The bed can't be defiled. But no, humble yourself for a minute. Take yourself out of it. Take, take your own wisdom, your own knowledge out of it and seek the face of God. God will tell you himself. That's the thing about it. I don't have to prove to you anything. I got nothing to lose and nothing to gain. But seek the face of God yourself and he will reveal these things to you. Even the thing about the, um, the uh, nose rings. I got nothing to lose, nothing to gain. That's you. That's your bondage. Mm -hmm. But if you would just humble yourself and ask God, God, is this true? Whenever you hear anything, you should always take it back to God. God, can you verify this for me, please? And God will verify. Because if we acknowledge him in all of our ways, he would direct our path. If we seek him, we will find him. But these spiritual spouses, they are so wicked. Just the other day, um, I was praying for a friend of mine and a spirit manifest. I forget the name, but a spirit manifested. And the spirit said in, in, the, most, um, in the most wicked way, I'm going to sleep with her tonight. No, you're not. Uh-uh. So they, they look at us like we're, we're, we're a piece of meat. They look at us like we're nothing. Mm -hmm. But we perish because of lack of knowledge, because we don't want to go deep. We don't want to go to the deep, to the deep, to the deep. We don't want to seek the face of God because we love what we love and we're comfortable. But if we are going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, we got to deny ourselves. That means, Lord, whatever you want me to give up, I will give up literally. But all of us are not there. And this is why we're bound. This is why we're afflicted. Mm -hmm. This is why there's a perpetual, uh, uh, um, you know, bondage that's there. A door that remains shut in, in our lives. I remember I was in a session and the spirit of stagnation manifested. And that spirit, you know, it took joy in the fact that it caused this person so much harm. Where is stagnation in the Bible? black and white you don't find that but because we don't see it in scripture we just brush everything off that's not you know directly in the word of god but if you would seek god concerning all these things the lord would make these things known to you i'm a living testimony i said i, I cried out to god god teach me about deliverance i was in the four walls frustrated crying upset in church because it's, it, it was so religious like okay here we go this is gonna happen now this is gonna happen now like i could pinpoint everything it was no flow of the spirit i was in church frustrated i'm like lord like this can't be it it has to be more i know it's more because i'm getting sexually harassed at night by these demons and i would be laying down in the bed man of god and i will feel a nudge like somebody touched my shoulder like yo dude, you, you can't make this stuff up <laughs> you can't make it up this thing is real 
But we as children of God, we're comfortable where we are. We don't want to go deeper. We're surface level. Man, we got to go deeper, man. There's another yeah, world do. that we don't even know about. Meanwhile, you got the agents of Satan astral projecting, using devices to monitor us and do all this wicked stuff. I used to have witches come in my room. They used to nudge me to see if I was sleeping. I used to feel it. Then I would be knocked out. Like, But then I started to pray against it. Then I, I noticed a shift. But I bring it home there. We, uh, we got to go deeper, y'all. All this stuff is true. I'm, I'm in these sessions, man. I'm... Sometimes I want to just scream like, yo, I hate y'all. Y'all doing all this harm to mankind. Why? Like, y'all had y'all chance. Y'all messed up. Leave us alone. For real. Come on. With that, I yield to you, Dr. Wayne. Amen. Sister Faustina. She's not on the stage. Um, I try to bring her up. I don't know what's oh, going nobody, on. No, nobody pull her up. There I'm she goes. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, this was some really good porridge tonight, Dr. Wayne. Um, I remember um, when I first met you, it was actually when you were teaching on Clubhouse. And one of my mentors had um, brought me in the room, Prophetess um, Jacqueline Daphne. And I'm like, who is this man? And the rest is history. But since I've met the ministry and I've learned the information on the Marine Kingdom, especially when it comes to perversion like sodomy um when i told my husband he was like okay well, whatever god say we're gonna do so, so we stopped it and i noticed so, yeah. even i noticed even and i'm not trying to be um graphic but our our love life has gotten much better same same mm-hmm. let me tell you something about anything that's distorted and twisted is not of god and the enemy likes to likes to distort love and twist love because that's what the enemy does he perverts everything that's good and beautiful and i remember when i first started deliverance about three years ago a young lady in my church um she came to me and asked me for prayer i'm like pray for what she was like i'm having you know i'm being attacked at night by a, um a demon that's having sex with me and raping me I'm like, what did you do? And she was like, she went to Bob Larson. I'm like, okay, what happened? And she was like, nothing. He didn't cast it out. <laughs> so me and Shan, me and Shan, we helped her. So that's how I initially started to do deliverance um, on via, you know, via Zoom, whatever. And the rest is history. But that was our first encounter it was when a, somebody who was actually under attack from a spiritual spouse. This thing is real. And people are suffering. They are suffering in silence, but they are ashamed. I've been in church for 25 years, and I have never heard about this until last year from Dr. Wayne. Why? Why? I mean, I was in Word of Faith Church, Pentecostal Church, London Church, but this is not being preached in the churches. Why? Because the enemy likes to have things in dark. Mm-hmm. Ness. Mm-hmm. That's where he flourishes in darkness. Mm-hmm. And when you expose to the light, it has to go. And that's what deliverance does. It exposes, it reveals, and it removes. So if anyone who is struggling with this, do not feel ashamed. And he wants you to feel ashamed, so you can't talk about it. And fear and perversion was two things that I had to get delivered from. I mean, talk about perversion. Everything except for an animal, okay? Man, woman, myself. Listen. Mm-hmm. But the thing about it is when you could talk about what God has done for you, it shows that you are free. I've been with a woman. I've been with a man. I've been with a married man. Listen, I can tell it all, right? We all have a story. And we have to understand once you're delivered, your job is to help others to get delivered too. Amen. Come on, your job is to help others to get delivered too. We're not here for Q games. We're here to help people to get delivered. And I, I always notice that whatever I'm doing anything for God that's important or, or, or like big, I always get attacked in the dream by a, a um, sexual interaction. Like even last year, I went to Jamaica to do a deliverance conference. That night, I'm in the bed with my husband. 
Here comes the dream about me having sex with my husband. And because I knew when I woke up, like, my husband is in the bed with me. Why would I have a dream about my husband having sex with me? Mm-hmm. There was a demon coming disguising as a familiar person that I knew. But because I had the knowledge that this was a demon, I had to renounce and repent and go through some type of, you know, deliverance myself too. So my point is when you see these things happening in your dream, don't take it lightly. It's not your husband if you're married. It's not your person that you have a question. It is a demon coming as a familiar person having sex with you. And you have to renounce it, repent, and come out of agreement with it. And especially if it's happening real currently, that means that there's a problem. There's open doors. There's altars that needs to be broken. There's covenants that needs to be renounced and severed. And I use the mic, Dr. Wayne, because I could go on and on and on. Great teaching, Dr. Wayne. Okay, I want to I want to say one more thing before um we go to um uh yeah, Dara. So there are four types of spiritual marriages, right? The first one we talked about is Genesis chapter six, when the fallen angels who came and slept with women. Number two. Women who come or men who come in dreams and sleep with people. Number three, sexual thoughts that become dreams. And number four, the spirit of the dead who comes to sleep with humans. Right? We already talked about all of the symptoms. Listen, I got to just, y'all got to go, y'all got to subscribe to Deliverance Chronicles. This is just too much. I'm going to put this article in the chat so you can read it yourself. Somebody grab this from, from um, the stream and put it in Clubhouse. But I want you to understand something. The context of the concept of marriage that we have in America is completely foreign to what God has established. Because these demons, they actually, right? They actually pay a dowry to be able to come and cohab and marry you. And so to reverse that, this is one of the parts that most people don't really want to broach. You have to establish a new covenant with God by placing an offering on the altar because they placed an offering on the altar. Our forefathers received from some of these demons. What are you talking about, Wayne? How are we languishing in poverty and we have other ancestors that were immensely wealthy? Because they put us, our future, on the altar and the demons paid them. And we are now subject to generational spiritual marriages. Um, uh, Sister Yadera. Hello. Um, I just wanted to share that I have a 25-year-old married daughter, and I sent her this topic. You have on Deliverance Chronicles, a, I believe it's a 27-minute video on spirit spouses, and I sent it to my parents, and it just, they got so much breakthrough. They, uh, my daughter got married young, got had a baby young, so they got married, and you all know when you get married because you have a baby, the statistics are not good for divorce, right? They always say, you're gonna be a statistics. Well, she's been married, I think, seven years now, and she's doing very well, but now she understands when there's fights, when there's, that the husband is a Catholic, so he doesn't really believe in any uh, spiritual warfare, but he's very jealous because she's very beautiful and young. So naturally, any guy, any guy would be jealous, but he doesn't have a relationship with God yet. But this, video this information has saved their marriage where she would have just been done and left and said you know what i can't deal with this he's overbearing or protective she's able to understand that it's the spirits behind it at play telling him things lying to him and wanting them to get a divorce so this kind of information can really help the believer especially if you're struggling with divorce or wanting to leave your spouse and what I find just so ironic is how the perversion spirits will cause you to have sex prematurely, you know, when you're young. And then once you're with that person, they cause you to go to somebody else. And mm-hmm. then once you get married, they cause you not to want to be with that person. Mm-hmm. It's wicked. But, you know, the word says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free in John. So 
this information has set me free, has set my family free. I'm very thankful. And my daughter and my granddaughter still have their dad and their husband around. And I really thank you for that and thank God for that. Are you the mic? Glory to God. Um, Emma. Em, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. Your mic looks like it's muted, though. I'm so sorry. There you go. is at church today so I'm just here high stuff. Um, similar to probably I have my own experience with years ago when I was still in the world um, living in La Vida Loca I remember I woke up in the middle of the night and I felt a man on top of me I could feel his man parts in my right hand and I remember opening my eyes and I could see this tall figure, black. And I took a second to really analyze what was happening. I was not half awake, half asleep. I was fully awake. I could feel this person on me and I could see him. And I just remember being stunned. And all I could say was Jesus. And I kept saying it and I began to see the figure dissipate. <laughs> and that's when I was like, oh, oh, this stuff is real. Mm -hmm. um, prior to that, I these, you know, the men in my dreams or I'll wake up and I feel like I've been violated. And it was crazy because um, after coming out of Roman Catholicism, my family were looking for solutions everywhere. And it wasn't until I came across, uh, I think she was like a Vodun or Santeria priestess, pretend to be a, a Christian who told me, oh, you have a spirit spouse, so casually. And so um, I just thank God because since then I have received deliverance. But these things are real. Um, and just like Prophet Tesla said, when you see these things coming to you in your dream, it could be your spouse, it could be the person you're fornicating with, even though you shouldn't be fornicating. Know that it's not that person. Know that it's not you just being highly attracted to them. That these things do come as people either you like or not even dislike, honestly. They can come in the form of friends you've never even looked at romantically. They will try to establish covenants with you. And a lot of these things can and have affected people's marriages, their relationships. Um, for some reason, you're the, the whole package, yet you cannot seem to find a spouse. People reject you. Come on. You love them. A lot of this is as a result of the ownership in this spirit because they have laid claims to you. And because of that, you will not have a successful marriage or relationship. And even if you do end up getting married, it will not be a happy not be a conducive one that's something that they try to make sure of. um now in church when we're talking about everything concerning these things um my pastor brought up the book of enoch and we we're reading that and of course how the fallen angels taught the the daughters of mind various things right knives how to make knives and mm -hmm. footwork makeup dyes ornaments and jewelry and I think it's important for us to know as Christians how these things exist in heaven, how God created things good. And these fallen angels took and perverted the things that God established for wickedness and evil. And so oh. if as a woman, you cannot not go without a wig, you can't embrace the natural beauty that God is giving you. You, you're, you have placed your identity in wigs, attachments, beautification, makeup, jewelry, that's a problem. If as a man, you cannot go without ornaments, the latest fashion trends, there is an issue. You have to learn how to embrace yourself as God made you. And when you try to hide God's glory behind the material, there mm -hmm. is a problem there. And I know one thing God was showing me, and everyone, you know, gets their own revelation concerning things um not saying everything good now but when it comes down to make you care you need to be extra cautious where you're shopping clothing be very cautious some of these companies they are going to the green kingdom for their for their come on there was a wig i wanted to buy god showed me absolutely not that place off they collect their hair from idols temples you better not do that and i was like thank you father and so 
uh, while I see a lot of justifications from men and women concerning they do, there are things that God allows. But just because God allows us to do certain things doesn't mean that everything's a free for all. Just because God allows us to eat fried chicken don't mean you go to eat their Freemasonry chicken. <laughs> so, so we have to be very cautious in things we do because we don't know what is associated with those things. We don't know how we can come into covenant with certain things. I remember God showing me there are certain establishments to go to and that will give spirit spouses legal access to come in. Um, certain fumes, certain colognes that attract certain spirits to you. It's deep. Mm-hmm. And it's sad because the body of Christ as a whole doesn't teach about this. I know I'm African, and we tend to talk about it in African churches, but not necessarily from the biblical standpoint. And so you see people who will talk about spiritual spouses, but they don't understand the biblical justifications where it is located in Scripture. And so I say this to also say, Christians, we have to have that balance. You have to know the Bible. You have to ask the Lord for revelation concerning his word. But then you also have to be in tune with the spirituality aspect. Because hearing Prophet Odalin's testimony, there are so many people who will scoff at it. So many Christians that be like, who the sun sets free. They don't understand that that's the reason why they're waking up in a pool of water. <laughs> right? And so as Christians, let's be very cognizant and cautious before we roll our eyes and don't ever think it could because sometimes you wake up and you don't remember who touched you at night all i have to say you my mic hey uh man of god i want to say something real quick um i feel led to share this Go ahead, sir. so um you said something that was very powerful you said that you know we are married to the people that we dealt with in the past that's very true um, it's not up until I went through that process of deliverance and the Lord began to give me that list. I was doing self deliverance and I had to go back and name every person I was intimate with. And I had to break the soul ties. Now, let me back up. Mm-hmm. When I came into my marriage, um, you guys were like, would never know my, you know, like know me from my past because I'm, I'm a completely different person, but I was out there. I was out there. I've been with, with a lot of women. So, when I got married, I still had that same mindset and I had to unlearn a lot of stuff that I learned when I, when I was out there in a bedroom. So for a while, that was a strain on my marriage because I was so used to just being wild and, you know, it was no love mix. It was just lust and it was just, you know, but I had to come out of that. And I had to go through the process of unlearning all of that stuff. And I had to, you know, go through that process of learning my wife, learning how she wants to be pleased and how she wants to be intimate. So we had to learn each other. But for a while, it was hard for me because I was stuck in the old me, lustful, perverse. Let's 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 hang from the ceiling. Let's do this. Let's you know, what I'm saying. So that was my mindset. And that was that was difficult for me to get out of because, again, I didn't know about deliverance. You know what I'm saying? So I just thought, well, you're going to just do what I want, you know, and it was it was a lot of strain there. But I want to encourage everybody, those that, you know, are, are seeking to get married, go through deliverance, break those soul ties, break those soul ties, because you're carrying a lot of people with you if you don't. So when I went through the process of my self-deliverance, the Lord gave me the list. And, and and I know it was the Lord because it was so long ago, it was people that I forgot about. But the Lord gave me that list and I began to break the soul ties and I began to command every spirit that entered me from those soul ties to leave in Jesus' name. And now, after I went through that process, I, I believe that it really helped my marriage. Because now, okay, my mindset now has changed and now I can love my wife the way she want to be loved. I can show affection in the bedroom Come on. the way she want to show affection. Fellas, where you at? You know, this is what God wants from us. We got we to gotta come out. You know, now come on. we had left the strange place, but our mindset, right, is, is still captive. Our mindset is still in that place. This is why, going back to last night, we got to renew our minds we got to renew our minds because we need deliverance we need healing from babylon from egypt did you hear what i just said 
I was married, but I was still mm -hmm. intimate with my wife. Like I was out there with a with, 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 with a random Come woman. On. I had to deprogram, had to go through deliverance. Come on. But we don't talk about this stuff. I wasn't gonna mention it, but the Lord said, "Free my people." So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it in Jesus' <laughs> name. <laughs> so. A lot of our marriages are suffering because we still have that old mindset like we're not married. We're still, you know, it's like we're still messing with people from our past. Learn your spouse. How do you want me to love you? How do you want me to show affection to you? What, what gets you going? And let me perfect that. And, you know, those that, that want to get married, it ain't easy. It takes work. You need the anointing. You need the anointing because it's like, it's like they're anointed, amen, to get on your nerves. You gotta, man, <laughs> fellas, come on, talk to me. <laughs> like, Lord, keep me, Lord. Keep me. <laughs> you know, and like you wanna be the head, so you gotta, you know, conduct yourself a certain way. You gotta have the patience. It, it comes with a lot. It's not easy at all. But I just wanna encourage you. Uh, deliverance is a beautiful thing go through the process and if you're married now amen go through the process with your spouse if you you are if you're striving to get married go through the process yourself it's a beautiful thing i remember um a while ago like the lord told me when i met my wife he says she's your wife but she's not ready yet it's a process that she had to go through you know what I'm saying? So don't, 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 don't frown on the process. Go through that process. Get your deliverance. And it would, it would be so beneficial to you. With that, I yield my mic. Thank you. I, I have a question too for, for Dr. Wayne and for Prophet Odalyn. For anybody who doesn't have a spouse on the same page yet, what is your recommendation? I would say um, fasting. And prayer, you pray for them that God will soften their hearts, that God will soften mm -hmm. that person's heart, that God will change their mind. In the meantime, you keep your position as a woman of God, as a man of God, and you continue to love your spouse and continue to plant seeds, plant seeds. And, you know, somebody's going to come water that seed and God will give the increase. But you have to stay patient. You have to stay patient. It, it may not happen when you want it to happen. But continue to trust God and let God do the work. I've 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 been in sessions. I kid you not. I've been in sessions, and the um both both um people in the in, in the marriage, the husband and the wife had a spare spouse, and it was a strain on their marriage. She went through deliverance. Her spare spouse manifested and 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 confirmed. Oh, he has a spare spouse too. So on and so on. So so I said, okay, look. We, we gonna do this together. I, I'll be praying for you. You fast, you pray, we're gonna attack it. And she began to love on her husband. She began to you uh, um, continue to be a wife, a good wife, cook for him, clean, all, all that good stuff. And eventually his heart changed. Eventually, because she prayed so much, she shifted the atmosphere. So now it's, it was difficult for the, the uh, spirit spouse and the husband to operate. And now their marriage is better than before. So I just want to encourage you, no matter where you may be in your marriage, don't you give up. It may be rough, you know what I'm saying? But hang in there. Hold your position. Now, you can't walk in frustration because when you walk in frustration, you begin to release stuff. Oh, things will never be the same. Uh, things never going to change, so on and so on. And you begin to speak and give the enemy fuel or ammunition against you in your marriage. You speak life. You get on your wall and you pray and you pray and you pray and you create an altar right there in your house. You begin to tear down everything that's fighting against you your marriage and the prayers of the righteous avail of much you may not see the victory you, in one day but you will see the victory yes ma'am sorry do you think that the spouse that's the believing you know we're, we're more aware of the marine kingdom stuff can they divorce the other spouse from the spiritual spouse you want to answer that doctor does Wayne? that make sense yeah it does make sense Ask the question again to make sure I understand. Okay, well, I'll just use me as an example, just so we'll be clear. So if my spouse does not believe that he has a spirit spouse, but I can see evidence of it, can I break that spiritual marriage up through my prayer? 
Of Nine course. Well, courts of heaven. Yes. Okay. Yes, you can do two things. Yo, did we do the courts of heaven? Do we need to talk about this tomorrow night? I think you did at the beginning, but I could be wrong. But okay. we didn't bring up this um, topic. Keep in mind, the only marriage that is ordained by God is one that is established under his covenant, which means the other marriage is polygamy. It's an illegal marriage. So you have the ability to pray and fasting to disrupt that whole thing because you are the rightful bride of your husband. Here's the thing that most people understand. The spirit spouse goal is to destroy the marriage if you're married already. And if you're not married, to prevent you from having a godly ordained marriage. So you having the knowledge, the wisdom, and the revelation, plus the anointing, you have the ability to break that thing off. As in Paul says, the sanctified wife or husband or spouse sanctifies the unsanctified individual. You have the spiritual authority because you have the spiritual knowledge and revelation. And you're walking in your calling. Break it up. Break it up. Send them jokers packing. Tell them to go marry some rocks or something. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, I wanted to go I, I to... Oh, sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Lo. You sure? I'm mm -hmm. happy to wait. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I just want to thank you for this um, teaching because a lot of churches do not address this um, topic of the Marine Kingdom and spirit spouses. So um, before, I would say in 2022, the Lord um, introduced me to my husband-to-be, right? And um, sadly, we were very, we were, I was just starting to get strong in my faith and God introduced, brought this man into my life and showed me immediately that he was going to be my husband. Now, I didn't know how to go about this situation. So um, like people, in, you know, who are lukewarm and still in the world, we we thought, okay, well, I thought, uh, you know, the people that have gotten married whilst fornicating, so uh, I guess I don't have to necessarily go through what the Bible is saying, seeing as God has showed me that this is a person that I'm going to marry, right? Um, sadly, I was wrong. Um, and there were so many things that happened in, in that course of that relationship. But um, the Lord separated us and so many things were revealed um i started having very strange dreams um of being around like near the ocean after being intimate with this man um mm. and i've never had that before not saying that i didn't have a spirit spouse but the dreams became very wacky and uh, at that time i was starting to understand things about the spiritual realm because of social media so <clears throat> i just used to document these things and pray of course um but towards like the end of the year i just had this desire to start removing certain things because i thought you know um well god has given me a husband and he fulfills me in the bedroom there's absolutely no need for me to have things like sex toys which i used to have um as a way of not sleeping with multiple men and um i haven't shared this story much only with a few people but i, I just feel like it needs to be out there so that people are aware if they're not aware um so i, I believe that that was god putting that desire in me to just start removing things and this was before i'd encountered god at this point so one night i took away my toys and went and threw threw them in the bin and said right that's i don't need that because what is the point of being with somebody if i'm going to have some assistance when they're not there or whatever the case um i kid you not that night I had basically a demonic attack telling me to go and get back those toys 
out of the bed. There were literally demons fighting me and attacking me Come in on. my dream. I was scared because at this time, <clears throat> God had just started like opening my eyes to the spirit realm. And it wasn't, he didn't open it fully. And I thank him for that because I would have checked myself into a mental institution believing that I was insane at this point. Um, so I woke up very scared, prayed. And that's when I realized that there was something demonic about these toys that the world um, puts out there. You know, they're married people that have these toys because they have marital um sexual problems in the, in the bedroom um so it's not just single people that use them or people that are in the sex industry no there are people out there like myself who convince themselves that rather than going out there to sleep with multiple men i can have this if i need um you know to please myself or whatever and that went on for so many years i had no desire to be married had no desire to sleep around i just wasn't like that no no not, not saying that I didn't, because of course I did have sex, I did have relationships before, but it just wasn't a desire that I had in me. Um, so after I encountered God, he uh, sat me down and told me to list all the partners that I've been with, even the casual sex people, <laughs> okay? <laughs> um, and I did that, and he told me to repent break the soul ties and also take authority over my husband because he has joined us together start repenting for him and he he also took me to the courts of heaven for the both of us through fasting and prayer i was able to come out of these covenants and i've not really shared that much with many people and i've not really encountered many people that speak about this stuff and how important it is to um, get rid of soul ties because they will come in between your relationship. And a gateway is fornication. Because we fell into fornication, the, the devil was able to mess with our relationship. He sought a lot of discord, um, a lot of insecurities, um, and just miscommunication such that we just needed to take some time apart. And that's when God came and you know revealed himself to me and that's when I went through my whole deliverance. Now, on the balance of makeup and weaves and stuff like that, I, I absolutely agree with everything that you have taught. It's absolutely correct. However, I have to also put a balance to it because of my own um, revelations and things that God has told me. So when it comes to um, things like makeup, the Lord one day told me that he... He wants me to remember that I was wonderfully made. And I don't need to validate myself in outer beauty. However, he did say he wants me to maintain my beauty for my marriage so that I don't give my husband any reason to ever, you know, be tempted because he had strong lust issues um, to be ever tempted outside. So... I, I have personally been told by the Lord not to stop wearing my makeup, but I don't need makeup. So that's one thing that I need to stress out. It's not something that I need. I just do it because I've been allowed me personally. And also God has told me where not to get my makeup, what to throw away. Um, and uh, weaves, I'm just, I've also heard, I've not had that revelation from the Lord yet, but I do know that there are some places that I've spoken to other sisters in Christ that they get um, their weaves from, and some places God has told them not to go because those particular hairs, hair or weaves are sacrificed to the marine kingdom. So I just wanted to put a balance out there that there are some provisions that god will make and only god knows why he does this i don't know because i was prepared to stop wearing makeup and and doing my nails i'm prepared to do it all i don't really care about it i don't care about fancy things but if the lord has given me a certain grace i'm more than willing and happy to go with it and then when he convicts me as the time goes 
maybe he will, t and I'm sure he will, stop wearing that. I will happily do it. It's not going to be a problem at all because for me, my identity isn't on my out experience, uh, appearance. It's about my relationship with the Lord and just knowing him and loving on him and doing what is right in his eyes. Um, I, I, Brother Odeling, you mentioned about the the oral sex part. Now, <laughs> Of course, I've just come to this knowledge a few weeks ago through uh, the teachings that you guys have shared, and I'm so grateful. And um, I have been so conflicted, like, how do I approach this situation with my husband-to-be? Um, because obviously it's a sin. And the Lord told me that I should not exert my authority over my husband. But what I should do is pray that God revealed it to him so that in that I'm not Bible bashing him and, and just making it difficult for him to get that revelation himself because it's so important that he also receives that revelation and, and, and we don't take on the Jezebel spirit by trying to dominate the men and tell them what to do when that's not the order of God so I just wanted to put those points out and um thank you as well for the for the teaching and obviously use wisdom and always seek god on how to manage convictions as you are going along your, let me your respond. journey let me respond to you sure i absolutely disagree with everything you just said here's why makeup was created by demons okay God will not tell you to wear something that a demon has created that connects you to the marine kingdom, number one. Number two, God says a woman's hair is her glory. Why would he have you to wear anybody else's glory? That glory is not from God. And here's the thing, personal conviction, right, is not the deciding factor on whether something is true or not. You got to go to God and ask him, maybe you heard wrong. But these things were created by demons. What God has considered aberrant can never be made holy or acceptable. I'm sorry. Okay. That's just the way it is. And see, we we, we want to have caveats. And the truth is, I'm not saying this about you personally, but we always want to make excuses for to make things acceptable. I want you to think about this. Jesus gave everything. He left nothing. And we're still trying to find caveats and carve-outs so we can still accept the things of the world. That stuff is not godly. And it ties you to the marine kingdom, and you will never, ever, ever completely be free as long as you're still embracing the things that comes from devils. Period. It's the truth. We've done enough sessions, and we try to lay it on people lightly, we, I got videos. I got hundreds, if not thousands of hours of videos where these demons just say, yeah, as long as y'all have our stuff, we have access. We make y'all believe it's not a thing, but it's a thing because we use it to continually have access. That's what they do. And us as human beings, we take on the narratives of the world. We take off the narratives of demons. Like uh, if you read the book of Enoch, somebody mentioned the book of Enoch. All of these things that we have embraced, even abortion, abortion was created by demons. I absolutely agree with you. Um, I, I don't disagree with you at all on that point. What I'm saying is that God... How many deliverance sessions you've done? How many deliverance sessions you've done? What, what other people? No, no. I'm, I'm Period. Not, I'm not... Period. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. I absolutely... No, answer agree. the question. You, 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 you're dodging now. How many deliverance sessions you've done? I've just said none. Then you're not qualified to even speak on this in the levels that we're talking about. I'm sorry, okay. you're not. Okay. All right. Um, well, thank you anyway. Thank you for... You're welcome. ...your time. All right. Take care. God bless. God bless you too. Next. Hello. Hey, Dr. Wayne. Um, I just uh, want to speak on this because me and my husband... We have encountered this stuff all the way and, and learning from you guys as well. And I agree with everything that you just said, Apostle Wayne, like, because you're Apostle Wayne, because we got the like even about the oral sex, 
because like you said, we were doing it. I'm talking about as a Christian woman, I didn't have a clue, but the world, the world teaches you how like nobody, you know, and I raised, I was raised in a house where I didn't have safe parents where they kept pornography and all of these things, and we accepted it as normal. And you grow up or whatever, and then even people come in uh, the world, they try to legitimize uh, the, the the demonic sex that they have. Now they say I'm married now, so I wife, you know, so you know, it's my wife, so it's legal. We have type of sex and try to uh, live out those uh, with your friends, your old boyfriends and stuff like that and there's the money and even with, with the hair like I felt the pressure of even going back to the beauty supply store to go get the weed but, uh, but I've been staying strong I've been staying strong and not doing it because you have to really look at like why I, I want you to hold that thought for a second because I want to explain something in great detail in our innocence as children growing up and the images of beauty, right? At one point, did we decide that we weren't beautiful enough so we needed these things? When did that happen? When you start seeing the videos and stuff, I grew up off BET. Wait, 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 wait. Say that part again. Say that part again. I grew up off BET and I started seeing the videos and the girls in the videos, the TV. That's why I got That's it That's where it comes from. So how can we take something that the world is forcing on us and saying God is saying it's okay to do parts of it? That's like saying I smoke crack sometimes. Yep. That's that's all facts, Dr. Wayne. And even like uh when Lolo was talking about the oral sex or whatever, not only should you pray for your husband, but according to the word of God, you have a right to say no, you know, because it's sin. You know, your husband, you know, a lot and a lot of and a lot of husbands try to put them Put that over the wife's head. You know, I, I have heard of husbands saying, well, you can't deny me because I'm your husband. When it comes to simple things like that, oral sex, you have a right to say no. And God That's will correct. back you up. The Holy Spirit will back you and you say no because are you do you want to please God or do you want to please your husband? And, you, and at that point, when it comes to sin, you have to make a choice. Now, as far as normal sex, you know, that God made, then you don't deny your husband or whatever. And even with that, you know, you know, that's that's different. But when it comes to simple sex, oral sex, anal sex, you have a right to say no before God. And I promise you that he will back you because I mean, you know, even people in the Bible talk about people loving uh, a, a pleasure, rather uh, uh, being lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And so. I had a friend of mine, a Christian friend of mine, she was scared to tell her husband because she said that, you know, I introduced him to this and now I'm afraid to tell him because she got the revelation from God and, and she was listening to me and my husband. Me and my husband have talked about it before, like on Facebook and stuff like that. She said, I'm I'm seeing what y'all are saying, but I'm nervous to even tell to tell my husband, a lot of women are scared to tell their husband because we've been doing it for so long and he like it. So, you know, I, I'm afraid to tell him, but who do you serve? You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that you haven't been out more than that, but I'm just letting you know, Lolo, that the Lord will back you. You can confidently say that, you know, I can't do this. Respectfully say, I can't do this. You know? So and any and any woman on here that's afraid to tell their husband, because I told my husband, I said, I ain't feeling right about this. I said, I believe the Lord is telling us not to do this. I still feel so strong. I said, the Holy Spirit said this. And this is before we see our brother Olin talk about it. And like shortly after that, we see our brother make a, a status about it. This is before we even knew him real good or whatever. And I said, this is like real confidence. I said, I know he's telling the truth. I said, this is not right. It's not right on a spiritual level. It's not right on a, a, a natural level. Like, all, it's just wrong, period. And I can talk about it from any level. You know, it's just wrong. And it's disgusting. It's very, very nasty when you think about it. But like I said, the Bible talk about men want love, uh, uh, being lovers of ple pleasure rather than lovers of God. And I encourage any woman, whatever, as far as the weed, Hey, strong. I, I gave up the perms. I gave up the weave or whatever. And I pray to God about my hair. I believe the Lord. And I and I just love real quick how uh, my sister Monique hair has grown. That encouraged me. Monique hair is growing so beautifully. <laughs> Monique ain't got no weave in her head. I said, Lord, I can do this thing. <laughs> Listen. Come on. Come on. God wants to be able to detect us in the realm of the spirit. Okay.
when he looks down from heaven and he says, where's my child? He got to be able to find you. Why? How does he find you? By his glory. If your glory is covered up, how is he going to find you? I know that may seem very adolescent in the context, right? But we got to understand that God is looking for us. The enemy doesn't want you to be found. They want to control your head. Whoever controls your head controls your body, controls you. Whatever influence that you are under, it starts with the head. How else are they going to do it by having you put their stuff on your head? You ever realize when y'all go to the beauty salon and dudes do it to them, we get that fresh cut, we feel brand new. Why is that? Vanity. Vanity. I'm not saying walk around looking like a dusty old bag, but the old church mothers, they had it right. They didn't have all the revelation, but they had it right. They had it right. I know we're going to keep making excuses. And listen, I understand. I will never understand what it's like to be a woman with all this oppression about looks and beauty. But the end of the day, you don't want anything that separates you from God. You want nothing that separates you from the glory of God. You don't want anything that keeps you hidden and obscured. You don't want anything that's going to keep you in bondage for the sake of somebody else's perception. Because the truth is, unless you look in the mirror, you can't even see yourself. Y'all going to make me preach again. If you have issues with your hair, tonight we're going to pray about your hair and your glory coming back. We're not going to make excuses about satanic diseases that forces you to do satanic things. We're not. We're going to pray about these things. God is able to heal everything. Stop cutting God out of places that he wants to be involved in. Straight up. Let's go. Listen, God wants y'all to be free. I don't want y'all to think that we're bashing y'all. You know how we know this stuff? We do these recessions. These demons tell us. God compels them to reveal so that we can help y'all out. That's how we know. We didn't make this up. We don't have a dog in the fight. Whether you wear your weave or not, it don't affect me or my household. I am here to give you the truth. The issue is a lot of times the truth is hard to deal with. Why? Because it requires change when you consider it. Yo, perversion, I was the king of perversion. I'm about to put my business out there. If I see it in the book anywhere, I know y'all told me. I had a harem. I already told Erica, so y'all can't dime me out. I, I used to rotate women on the weekend. Because I could never be satisfied. Why? Because I saw porn at a young age. Plus, I was dealing with molestation that I was never delivered from. So I never really had the spirit spouse interaction to the point like brother um, um, prophet. Oh, but my loins could not be under control. And my dumb self would say something like, y'all gonna meet a new girl every day this year. What? So my pursuit... Was the, ch was the chase of 15 minutes of pleasure. Y'all tell the truth. Ain't nobody going all night long. That's a lie from the pit of hell. 15 minutes of pleasure only to add another level of demon demonic oppression over my life. We reveal these things so y'all could be redeemed. We know that women are under attack severely. Like I tell Eric all the time, you got such beautiful hair, you don't even need a perm. What you need some praise for? What you need a wig for? And the part that we don't never look at for my sisters, y'all know some of them textures are here don't belong to us. Y'all know that's not us, right? That's not us. And the white images of beauty is what we've been bombarded with that we don't believe we're acceptable or, or beautiful unless we have a certain texture of hair. And if it's one that we weren't born with, we struggle. But God created you. That's like the, the bowl telling the potter, you didn't do a good enough job. Come on, y'all. God doesn't want anybody to be separated from his rest. He wants y'all to be free. Um, there's, a, there's a gentleman that I know that had a vision of heaven, and he was asking God, why are there so many men here and not that many women, right? And we know in the church, in the natural church, it's the opposite. You know what the answer was? Vanity. People are going to go to hell for vanity. Don't go to hell for something that no demon created. Don't go to hell for something no man created. Don't go to hell for some false identity. Don't go to hell for that. 
Come on, God is giving information so that we would be free. Buck all you want, but I'm telling you, we don't know this because it's our opinion. We know this because of revelation. That's how we know. It took Erica a while. I used to tell all the time, yo, you of all people that be around in and around these deliverances, what you gonna tell God? Stop making excuses for what you already know, because this is the thing that people don't understand. This stuff at some point is not only about, it's no, it's no longer about personal conviction, it is about obedience. How we gonna keep telling God we love him, but we want the Marine Kingdom stuff? How? This is why we can't get breakthrough, because the enemy knows that he always has an access to stop what God is doing because there are things that we won't stop doing or give up. And that's why we lose. And that's why we have these perpetual cycles of deliverance. This is why people can't be free. This is why you get free. And see, this is the thing that the demons know, right? Yeah, well, you're going to cast me out, but I'll be back. When, they, when you hear a demon say they're going to be back, because they know that there's something that's going to uh, give them access to you. Because you're not going to forego everything that's going to cause you to be free. This is why you will leave. But we'll be back. We'll be back. Because we make excuses like, well, the, the, uh, God has not personally convicted me on this. What? God has not given me the revelation. He's giving it to you right now. People reject revelation every day. You got Diedrich Haddon making excuses about going to the Grammy. If that is your preacher, you need to stop. Right? God loves us. How do we know? He created us in his image and likeness. And we choose the image and likeness of mermaids and sirens and Medusa over God's image. But we say we love him, though. I want to look like my father. I don't care. Erica be getting on me about cutting my hair, too, just so y'all know. Right? I'm just glad I can still grow hair. But I'm telling you right now, we reveal these things because we want our sisters to be free. We want our brothers to be free. We've been bombarded with all kind of demonic things that the enemy has made us believe that it's not a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. Don't let nobody tell you salvation is easy. People want salvation, but they don't want to give nothing up. They don't want to adhere to God's standard. It's a thing. We got to start listening to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and do these things. Like I tell Erica all the time, I get tired of doing deliverances. Why? Because people don't follow instructions. They don't want to do the things that keeps them free. And then they come back to us like we doing fixes. Like we the dope man and we fixing you up. It is tiresome and laborious. Why can't we just adhere to the standards that keep us free? Demons created this stuff or gave people the information to create it. Why? Because they know they will always be able to use it to gain access to your life. Some of us are going to go to hell because of our handbags. We can't give it up. Because the image of people that carry these purses is more important than the image of God. The value that God has placed on you, you trade away for the Marine Kingdom's value. Getting to heaven is not easy. Don't let nobody fool you. Oh, Jesus died for the cross. So all, and now it's gravy and cookies. No, it's work. It's sacrifice. It's not doing what everybody else is doing. Enough is enough, man. We got to do something different. And this is not to deride. This is not to condemn. This is not to make anybody feel bad. I've been doing this since 2010. I've seen a lot. I've had to learn to grow to the revelation that God has given me because some of the stuff is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Well, some of the things uh, the prophet Owen, oh, even Bishop Apostle um, Zimmerman will tell you, some of the things that we come across, we have to figure out how to uh, uh, release this to people so they don't absolutely just reject all of it. And here's the thing. We're giving you truth so you can be free. We want y'all to be free. 
this marine spirit thing, this spirit spouse thing is no joke. People are losing their lives because of emissions released into their bodies by the marine kingdom. Ovarian cancers and cysts and all these things come from the marine world. And if you have their stuff, they have access. Prophet, if I'm saying something wrong, please correct me. No, you're not. You're not. Um, this is hard to receive, but it's true. It's true. Um, I'm in these sessions too, and and like that's that's one of the strongholds is the hair, is the hair. But I know like this is a tough subject. People don't want to. Well, women don't want to really talk about it, but it's definitely a thing. It is definitely a thing when you do deliverance and receiving deliverance. And you know, um, you can't just say, "Well, if I don't feel convicted, then that's not true." I mean, come on now, we can't rely on conviction to determine whether something is right or not. Demons can alter us, alter our emotions. They can block certain things from from happening inside of us. Everything is not, you know, found out based on conviction. You can be in a place and not feel convicted. I remember I used to masturbate like crazy. I ain't feel no conviction. I, I felt no conviction. I used to watch pornography. I felt no, I justified it. As a Christian, mm -hmm. I felt no conviction. I yield, man. I yield with that. That's it. So, Sister Lolo, I don't want you to think that, that I'm attacking you. Right? I want oh, you no, to be free and no, everybody no, no, else. No, I, I'm not. I, don't I just want to make sure. Because you know. Oh, no, no. No, you have to give your point, and I absolutely respect that. And for the most part, I do agree. Um, but like I said, it's not that I'm wrestling with what is right and what is wrong. It's just that God has given me specific instructions of how I should deal with my marriage. And I will go to God as my head and my authority. I, I absolutely expect that some of the things that you are, you are teaching, I will be letting go but i do everything as god tells me remember i hear from god audibly and it's not like i'm just hearing my thoughts listen you're, you're treading on, on dangerous ground you're you're, okay. you're treading on very dangerous ground hear me out <laughs> god doesn't have to speak to you to give you revelation yes i agree see that's the problem with y'all prophetic people oh god didn't no, tell I me that Oh, hold on, hold on. Let's deal with this. With hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Right? The dangerous with pro the danger with prophetic people is that they have to hear from God specifically for something to be a thing. You need to be open that God has access to other people that He can use to give you revelation. Because if that's the case, we don't need preachers. We don't need the Bible. Let's just all. Meditate and wait for God to speak to us. Anyway, we got to move okay, on. Wait, so, I um, agree with you. It's not a disagreement. I absolutely. Uh, I'm not saying. Uh, listen, there are other people listening. I got to make sure okay. that they understand and these things okay. are clear. Okay. Right. So, Sister Faustina, can you lead us in repentance, please? Thank you. I don't think she's on it. Okay, there she go. There she is. Sister Faustina, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. There you go. Can you hear me? Yo, did you buy that new phone yet? If you, we can't hear you if you're speaking. The devil is a liar. Release her phone right now. Faustina, if you can hear us, we can't hear you. Your phone, your microphone is muted. I'll take over, man of God, while she fix her phone. Okay, go ahead. And she could just jump in later. Father, we thank you for this time of coming together. We thank you for... Father, to teach him. We just pray sorry. now. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I had to come back and come out. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. I apologize. Apple, okay. Apple products. <laughs> no, I actually got my new phone <laughs> today. <laughs> glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. All right, so we could um, just repeat after me. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before your throne of grace tonight. I confess and repent of all of my past sins, transgressions, iniquities, and all sins, according to 1 John 1 and 9. I ask you now, God, that you cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I confess and repent and renounce of all sins associated with the Marine Kingdom. Father, I renounce every sexual perversion, sexual act I've done in my dreams and in the natural flesh. I break and deactivate now all vows and covenants that I have entered into with a spirit husband or wife. Father, I will draw every engagement material, visible or invisible. I thank you, Father, that you have severed and dismantled all covenants made with the Marine Kingdom. Father, I repent and renounce of all types of ceremonies, acts, blood covenants in my dream realm. Father, like all demonic children I have had in the realm of the spirit, be consumed by fire tonight in Jesus' name. I repent and renounce of all sexual immorality, fornication, adultery, masturbation, bestiology, sodomy. Father, I repent of all sexual immorality now. And I ask you, God, that you cleanse my soul, cleanse my memory, cleanse my memory parts, cleanse my members, and cleanse my spirit man tonight in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that your word declares that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, you will deliver. Deliver me now, Father God, from all works of unrighteousness, witchcraft, divination, strange flesh attraction. Deliver me now, Father God, from idolatry, I repent and renounce from idolatry, vanity, pride, ego, haughtiness, and rebellion. Father God, I pray tonight that as I call upon your name, you would uproot all spirits, all covenants, all oaths, all altars to be broken tonight against my life, against my progress, and against my consecration. I thank you tonight, God, that by your stripes, I am healed. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight, God, for all that we have learned tonight, all that our ears have heard, all that we have repented and renounced, God. You know the things that we have done. You know the things we have encountered, God. And we thank you, God, for the spirit, oh God, of your word tonight, God, that comes, oh God, to cleanse us, oh God, to come, oh God, to renew us, to come, oh God, to deliver us, God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will move at every heart tonight, God, to come, oh God, to a place of deliverance tonight, God. We thank you, God. It's no coincidence that we're here tonight, God. So we come against all spirits of perversion, lust, fornication, adultery, masturbation. We bind you as one and we cast you out to the abyss now. We thank you, God, that you're loosing the people of God tonight from all sexual immorality, sodomy. We command you to go right. All spirits of sodomy come up and out now. All spirits of sodomy, 
come up and out right now, or spirits of sodomy, or spirits of Asmodeus. We command you to manifest yourself and go to the abyss now. We break your hold. We break your hold. We break your hold today, God. We will not be bound up with the spirit of lust, perversion. We command you to go now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we command, Father God, our members to be free. We command our reproductive systems to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ today. Father, forgive us for being ignorant. Forgive us, Father God, for we did not know what we were doing. Forgive us, O oh God, for walking in sexual immorality. Forgive us, God, for defiling our marriage bed. Forgive us, O oh God, for masturbating. Forgive us, God, for fornication. Forgive us, Father, from all the works of the flesh, God. We come tonight, God, as your sons and your daughters, God, and we thank you, Lord, that your word declares who the Son sets free is free free indeed. So we thank you, God, for all spirits of perversion. They got to go now. They got to come up and out into the abyss now. We thank you, God, that you will send forth your fire, God. We thank you even now, Father, that you're, oh God, you're purifying us tonight, God. You're burning up anything that's not like you, God. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh God, that we would not walk in a form of godliness and deny your power. Father, help us tonight, God, to stay on the straight and narrow path. We come against right now our spirits of rebellion, idolatry, pride, ego, God. We will not rebel against your Father. Help us, oh God, to let go of the things that doesn't please you, God. We command our spirits of rebellion, idolatry, vanity, pride to come up and out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, we break every chain, every link to rebellion. We break every chain, every link to idolatry. We break every chain, every link. Oh God, pride. you got to go now in the name of Jesus. God, we will not be in bondage, oh God, with any person, place, or thing. God, free your people tonight, God. Free your people tonight, God. Every doubt Oh, Basaka, every dark cloud over the people's head, I command you to go now. Every dark cloud following the people of God, I command you to go now in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not be in captivity with anything. Father God, we love you more than we love things. We love you more than we love anything in this world, God. It's not just a song, God. Let us be our purpose tonight, God. More than anything, I love you, Jesus. Let it be our heart cry tonight, God. More than anything, I love you, Jesus, God. Your words is why call me, Lord, and don't obey. Father, help us tonight, God, to Oh God, come to you, mighty God, and let go of the things. Any demonic encroachment, we bind you up now. The people of God will not walk in disobedience and rebellion. We bind you up and we bind you out now. We will walk in freedom tonight, God. We thank you, mighty God, that your word comes to make us wise. We thank your Father even now, God. You're removing, mighty God, the stenches, oh God. You're removing, God, the tattoos, the Jury God, oh God, the jury God, Yebe Sheke Broto, Rabba Baba Seke da Raba Sanda. You're removing the jury God, the rings, oh God. Yes, God, I thank you, God, for removing God, the strange images, the objects, the symbols, oh God that we have encountered in our dream room, God. I pray tonight for a spiritual surgery, God, to uproot everything that's lingering, God. Everything that's laying dormant in us, God, that doesn't belong there, God, we command to be exposed, revealed, and removed. We thank you, oh God, for the burning up, God, of every marriage certificate in the realm of the spirit, every photograph, every ring, every gown, catch a fire tonight, burn by fire tonight, every covenant made in our dream realm, we break it now, we break the altar right now, every blood sacrifice, God, that was done in our dream, that whatever we ate, whatever we consumed, God, let it come up and out now, we thank you, God, for severing the tie, oh God, to every link of every spirit 
spirit of perversion. We want to be free tonight, God. We want to walk in freedom tonight, God. Help us, oh God, Jesus, to lay aside the weights and the sins that try to easily beset us, God. We want to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. We want to walk in the power, the dunamis power, God. So we thank you tonight, God, as we go further in this time of prayer, God, that your people will be walking in freedom. They will get their deliverance tonight, God. You will set their mighty God. You will untie them. You will unravel them. You will take the rope off their necks. They will not be in captivity in their thoughts, in their minds, in their wills. We thank you, God, for doing something miraculous tonight, God. Deliverance is a deliverance ministry of miraculous. Oh, God, so we thank you, God, for the miraculous tonight, God, that you will set the captives free. Oh, God, remove mighty God the shackles of our minds, the shackles of our feet, the shackles of our waist, the shackles of our hands. God, I pray for freedom tonight, God. I pray for freedom. I'm seeing handcuffs again. Rabba Soko, Rakta every demonic handcuff. We break your links right now. We break your keys right now. Every demonic handcuff, we command you to loose us tonight in the name of Jesus. We will only be attacked how can two walk together unless they agree? We will only agree with the word. We will only agree with the Lord. We will only agree with his precepts and his examples. Father, create in us a clean heart. Renew in us the right spirit, God, to say yes, to yield, to surrender, to say not my will, God, but your will be done. I am tired of masturbating. I am tired of going to bed and waking up in, with my clothes wet. I am tired, my dear. Let the be the cry of your people, God, to cry out to you tonight. I am tired of watching pornography. I am tired of going to, from man to man, woman to woman. God, help your people tonight to be tired of the sin because your word says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So, Father, let your people find freedom tonight, God. Freedom tonight, God. Freedom tonight, God. Holy Spirit, move, breathe, blow on your people tonight, yes, God, yes, and yes. set them free Rasa by the power of the Holy Ghost. I yield the mic in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for troubling the waters, God. Father, we declare your fire now. It falls over the, the, the marine kingdom. We declare we trouble the waters now in Jesus' name. We send the fire of God to the waters. Raman de Beko Robose. We declare it overtaken against the marine kingdom now. We begin to overthrow, overthrow kingdoms, overthrow dominions, overthrow thrones in Jesus' name. Father, we ask for the fire. Father, dispatch the angels. Father, even now in this hour, dispatch the Eritan angels, dispatch the cherubims. Father, dispatch the the warring angels, oh God, Father, let there be an airstrike now over the marine kingdom. Father, we pray that earthquakes will go forth in the marine kingdom now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that even now your fire will fall. God, Father, we pray for fire and brimstone in Jesus' name. Father, as we pray, we ask for a shaking now. Lord, begin to shake the foundations of darkness now. Those that have been working against us, Father, those that have come to oppress us oh god father we target them tonight in jesus name we release arrows of fire we release bombs we release missiles now we declare a shaking we declare a shaking now we shake we shake the thrones now we shake the thrones now we shake the thrones now we command the subordinates to scatter to scatter to scatter the princes the 
kings be scattered in Jesus' name. We declare the fire of God. We declare the hammer of God. We smash and destroy your encroachments. We smash and destroy your pieces. We smash and destroy your works now in the name of Jesus. We intercept every plan, every strategy against us now. We curse it to the root and we declare it shall not stand. It shall not prosper in the name of Jesus. When you have advanced against us, we move you out the way and we advance against you. When you have come to besiege us, when you have come to surround us, we declare a tsunami against you. We move you out the way now. Every demonic barrier, every demonic mountain, we command it to break now in Jesus' name. We command the roadblocks in the spirit to break now in Jesus' name. Father, we declare a push. Rase, robo, sandi, we push up the core of wickedness against us, Father. We push the bands of wickedness against us, Father. Now in this hour, angels go on assignment and tear the kingdom apart. Tear the kingdom apart. Go into the waters. Go into the pits. Tear the kingdoms apart. Go into the skies and tear the kingdoms apart. Dry the waters. We prophesy drought. Now in the waters, drought. Now in the waters, we dry up the kingdoms. We dry up the waters now. We dry up the waters in Jesus' name. And we attack every mermaid, every merman. We attack mommy water. We attack the king of the coast now in Jesus' name. We attack every siren, even now, every prince, every king. We attack you now in the name of Jesus. All spiritual babies receive the fire of God. You're going to leave the people of God now in Jesus' name. Come up and come out and go to the dry barren place now in Jesus' name. All marine spirits, we call you out now. We command you to the dry barren place now in the name of Jesus. You that entered us while we were asleep, you that came in. While we were asleep, we renounce you. We command you to leave our bodies now in Jesus' name. Every demonic deposit, all poison, all toxins, the stem, the tentacles, we sever it now with the sword of the Lord. We break free from your grips now. We break free from your hold now. We command you out of our bodies now in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against all mind-binding spirits. Come up and out. Loose us now and go and go and go to the place you you don't want to go we command you to the dry barren place uh, now in jesus name anywhere our name has been written down we erase it now by the blood by the blood in jesus name anywhere we have placed we, we have been placed on altars we command the altars to bust now we command the altars to break now in the name of jesus we break the altars we tear down the shrines now the shrines in our neighborhood the shrines on our roofs the shrines around our houses we we command it to break the altars, the altars in the spirit. Angels of the Lord, break it now. Break it now. Break it now. Take no prisoners. Break it now in the name of Jesus. Michael, we declare now that you're going to tear down the kingdoms. You're going now to tear down the altars. You're going now to wreak havoc against the kingdom of darkness. We declare double for their trouble in Jesus' name. Everything they have released against us. We command now the terror of the Lord to fall against mommy water the terror of God to fall against the princes and kings now 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 in Jesus name we command a shift we command a shift now we command a shift this is a takeover we command takeover. We take over. We take over territory in the spirit where the enemy tried to confine us and put us in a box. We declare a takeover now in Jesus' name. We take territory now. We take, ter we take territory now. We declare the blood enforces our territory. We mark our territory in the spirit by the blood of 
Yahshua, by the blood of Jesus, we take territory now, we dominate in the spirit now, even now, we displace them, every witch from their altars, we move you out the way, may the wind of God terrorize you now, in Jesus name, we declare blindness against you, now, in Jesus name, when you try to see us in the spirit, uh, you will not be able to locate us, uh, we blind you now, we overpower you, by the power of the spirit of God, now in this hour, now in this hour, the fear of the Lord falls against you now. The fear of God falls against you now. To every witch, every warlock, all witch doctors, voodoo priests, shamans, the covenants, we break it now in Jesus' name. Everything established against us because of the altars, we break it now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we send the fire of God to every witch coven. Now, angels, terrorize them. Terrorize them. Give them no peace. Father, may you strip them of any peace they may have in this moment. Take the peace away, Father. Let them feel your terror, O oh God. May they feel conviction, O oh God. May they repent, Father, but remove any ounce of peace they may have right now, Father. Father, may the fear of the Lord meet every witch, every warlock that is fighting, that is working against us, God, even now in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus Christ. We begin to remove the curses. The curses, we remove it now. The curses in Jesus' name. The curses, angels, begin to go. Go, deal with the curse. We pray the blood of Jesus Christ in our blood, in our blood, in our blood. Any curse tied to our last name, any curse tied to our blood. Father, we pray that your blood, that your blood, even now, we begin to wash, wash, wash away, Father, the residue. Well, Father God, wash away the time release curses, Father God. Wash away the things that remain, Father God, that will hinder us from moving forward, oh God. We come against the stagnation, Father God. We come against every spirit that will cause us not to progress my god all spirits that will cause anti-progression we come against you we deal with you now we smash your powers now in the name of jesus christ we bring you down to nothing we declare humiliation against you now we declare embarrassment against you now we send you to the abyss now in the name of jesus father we pray for advancement we shall advance we shall advance in jesus name our days of being confined, our days of being in prison, Father God, our days, Father God, of being a slave, ah, ya both say, to demonic taskmasters, Father God, we break free from that oppression now, we break free from those holds now in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we just pray for liberty now, may we experience your liberty, Father, restore, my God, the joy of our salvation, Father God, may we have been bound, Father God, we pray that your love, that your grace that your mercies father god would flood us right now father we pray for restoration now father where the enemy has worked against us and caused disorder father we pray that your kingdom would fall let the order of god commence now in our lives in our homes uh, my god father in our lives everything pertaining to us god let it be overtaken by your order father god in the name of jesus christ let the peace that surpasses all understanding father be restored restore our peace father right now we pray against barrenness any woman under the sound of my voice that is affected by barrenness angels go forth now go release legions upon legions of legions of your angels father god father you said be fruitful and multiply my god i see waste speeds in the spirit we break every way i break every way speed I break everything that will hinder life from coming forth in Jesus' name. Angels, go take back the eggs. Begin to restore. Restore in the name of Jesus Christ. Restore the eggs of the women of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Restore the eggs. So, barrenness, your time is up. You got to go in Jesus' name. Come up and out and go to the dry barren place now in Jesus' name. What you have done is reversed. What you have taken must be restored in this moment now. No delay. Angels, recover and restore. Recover and restore. We 
we declare the eggs shall blend with their bodies in the name of Jesus. Fibroids, we command you out in the name of Jesus Christ. Every cancer, every cancer like my God, attack in their bodies. We command cancer, all forms of cancer to leave their bodies now in the name of Jesus. Come up and come out and go to the dry, barren place now. All spirit spouses, you got to go out, leave their bodies. Angels begin to go to the waters. Anywhere there's documentation that will connect the people of God to spirit spouses, smash the documentation. Break it now in Jesus' name. We declare an overtaking now. Father, may you cleanse us, may you wash us, our soul, our body, our spirit in this hour. Father, I pray for your daughters, Lord God. Father, restore their glory in Jesus' name. Anywhere the enemy has come in and placed on them a false glory, Father God, now by your spirit, Father God, I tear it off now. I remove the false glory. I remove the lies, Father God. I remove the deception, Father God. And even now, may their glory be restored like never before. May their glory be restored, Father God, as you have intended, Father. So it is. So shall it be, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, restore their glory. Restore their confidence. Low self-esteem. You have to go now. Come up and come out and go to the pits. Come up and come out and go to the pits come up and come out loose them now self-rejection out in jesus name self-hate out self-sabotage out out to the dry barren place now the people of god the women of god shall be free in jesus name father i pray for your sons i pray for your kings father god anywhere the enemy has affected their their, their, their sperm count father that will affect them father god to uh that they won't be able to have children father god we come against that now that attack father my god robo seek you you that are you are you that are in the body parts uh, the the man parts uh, we command you out you that are in the testicles out in the name of jesus loose now come up and come out in the name of jesus christ by the spirit of god the toxins my god the acid the acid come out now come out now we flush it out i flush it out by the blood of jesus christ all the acid comes out now all the poison comes out now in the mighty name of Jesus the curse upon the marriages it breaks now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus all curses all barriers that will cause the people of God to remain single by the spirit of the living God it breaks now father send the rail expose the counterfeits send the true spirit spouses in Jesus' name. Send the true spirit spouses, Father God. Send the true spirit spouses, Father God. My God, any form of witchcraft, God. Ah, yes, God. All forms of witchcraft, Father God, that has been embedded in your people, Father God. I command it out now in the name of Jesus. I command it out. All forms of witchcraft, my God, sorcery, divination, voodoo, santeria, that which is dwelling in inside of your sons and daughters i command it out now i declare it comes out now we flush it out by the blood by the blood by the blood of jesus come up and out the poison the poison the poison they have digested from food the witchcraft they have digested from food from drink from artifacts from materials my god from hair we flush it out Flush it out now. Out. 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 Out in Jesus' name. Randi Arabo Sakaya. Any any form of witchcraft that has come because of uh, uh, any hairstylist, any barber, we break it now. We command those spirits associated with these things to come out now in the mighty name of Jesus. Anywhere we have uh, uh, given, Lord God, given to the marine kingdom, Father, given to the enemy, Father, we have come into covenant, Father God, with the kingdom of darkness. We repent any spirit that entered us because of these covenants. Come out now. You got to go. Loose us now. Loose us now in Jesus' name. You're going to come up, come out. Come up and come out. Come up and come out. Ramandi korobo satalabakaya. Ah, yes, God. You that have a, a pain pain in your belly, un, un, unexplained pain in your stomach. I see bubbles in the stomach. Come out. 
out. I flush it out by the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. You that have not in your stomach, my God, come out now. Come out now. I flush it out by the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus up and out where the enemy has come in and cause mishaps, cause complications in the body. Out, out. Oh, Jesus. My God, pain in the, uh, 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 pain in the chest area. Out. It loose now. It loosens now. It loosens now. It loosens now. Yes, God. It loosens now. Come up and come out. Come up and come out in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not have breast cancer. I break that now in Jesus' name. Breast cancer, come out. Come out. Come out, you little demon. Come out and go to the dry, barren place now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare complete restoration now in the name of Jesus. Complete restoration now in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power. Power of the Holy Ghost, we shake the foundations, the foundations of Satan. Shake up, shake and break, shake and break now. In the name of Jesus, we flush you out. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. All curses that was sent to the people of God by the Spirit of God, we break it now. We break the curses. Every spirit associated with these curses go to the dry barren place now. Out. You failed your assignment. You have failed your assignment. Come up and come out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God, every spirit assigned to our marriages, we divorce you now. We deal with you now in Jesus' name. Come up and come out and go to the dry, barren place in Jesus' name. Every spirit assigned to our ministry, we frustrate you. You will never complete your assignment against us. Come up and come out and go to the dry, barren place in Jesus' name. Oh, God, what is this, Lord? I see uh, somebody with nails on, and the Lord is saying... There, there has been a curse placed on nails, uh, placed on these nails. There have been a curse placed on your nails. And since you got your nails done, you've been having, what is this, Lord? You've been having complication in your body and you can't explain it. You can't explain it to nobody. It doesn't make sense to you. And you've been asking God, what is this? What is going on? The Lord says, because of the nails, there was a curse placed on the nails. So when you put the nails on, you came into agreement with that curse. Every curse placed on the nails, on nails, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus right now, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. We break the curse now. We break the curse and we stop the sickness, the condition. We break it now in the mighty name of Jesus. We break the curse now. Every spirit attached to the curses, the nails come up and come out and go to the dry barren place. Now we declare that assignment has failed, that assignment has failed in Jesus name. And we declare over the people of God, we shall live and not die so premature death come up and come out and go to the dry barren place now in jesus name so father we arrest every opposition every form of resistance now we arrest them now and we send them to the pits in jesus name we arrest you now and we send you to the pits now in jesus name we arrest you now and we send you to the pits now in the mighty name of jesus christ we arrest you now we command you to go now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ come up and come out come up and come out now in Jesus name to the dry barren place you go now in the name of Jesus loose loose us now loose us now father anywhere anything that belongs to us have been buried oh yadabasiyadabakaya let the fire of God burn every item that belongs to us anything that has been written down concerning us burned by fire now in jesus name any curse that has been placed on us because items of ours have been buried let those items burn now let those curses break now in the name of jesus christ break now angels break it dismantle it we break the curses now by the spirit 
of the living God. So, Father, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ. May we be covered, our atmosphere, our homes, our family, our children, Father God. May we be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Every arrow, every fiery dart, we pull it out now. We pull every arrow from our back. My God, I pull it out in the name of Jesus Christ. I pull it out now. Every arrow out, out. Angels, pull it out. Pull it out in Jesus' name. Pull the arrows out. Every hook in your mouth. Angels, remove the hooks now. Remove the arrows now. In the name of Jesus Christ, every demonic dagger come out now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Amen. I yield to you, Dr. Wayne. Dr. Wayne, if you're praying, we can't hear you. Robobo Sondi Kalabasi Adabakaya. Mandi Mando Robobo Soto Yarabakoto Robose Yarabase Keterebeshi. And so, Father God, we recognize the nature of the attack against women. We know, God, that the enemy has released, Sarebeso Yorobo, has released, God, an attack on the glory. Father God, right now, some of these attacks, they have names, God. We're going to call them out. We're going to call them out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to call them out. We're going to call them out. So, Father God, anywhere the enemy has been in operation, Father God, using these illnesses, just had them steady go. Father God, we speak by the demon against the demon that causes telogen efflux vium, anagem efflux vium, alopecia aredia, tinea capitis, citrical alopecia, hair shaft abnormalities, hypo hypotrichosis. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, anything that attacks the glory of the women of God, if you if you want to participate, if you want to take uh, your hairpiece off for the sake of this prayer, I'm going to give you a minute to do so, and then we're going to go ahead, and God is going to return your glory. Father God, right now, give them the courage. Give them the courage, Lord. Mend their brokenness. Lord, we command rejection, abandonment. We command bullying. We command low self-esteem. We command all these things out in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, anywhere items that belong to them has been buried, anywhere hair has been buried, anywhere curses have been placed on the glory of God, Lord, on the top of their head, anywhere, Father God, these things have been perverted, anywhere there's been weakness to the blood flow, to the scalp. Father God, we reverse these things. Anywhere demons, oh my gosh. I hear the Lord saying, that's what Medusa does. She steals the glory of women. So Father God, we come against Medusa right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we scalp Medusa. We make her a bald held Goldilocks. You're going back to the pit with no hair. And you're going to release Release right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going to release right now in Jesus' name those that you have in captivity. You're going to release the glory of God that God desires for these women to have. You're going to release, and I break your power right now in Jesus' name. Every power of the siren, every power of the mermaids. You ever notice when you see images of mermaids, they're always holding mirrors in their hands because they think they're beautiful, because they steal the beauty of women. We reverse these things right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we break, we break, we break anywhere that we are in covenant with companies, with systems, Father God, that steal the glory of the women of God. We reverse it now. Father God, release blood flow. Lord, release the anointing. Release the original intent of things that you have prepared for them to have before the foundation of the world. Father God, we break curses against the glory. We break curses against the scalp. We break curses against beauty. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, because we are created, God, to look like you. So, Father God, those who are walking by faith and are willing to believe, Father God, what you're saying in this moment, I'm asking miraculous 
profound, prodigious hair growth right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we curse every demon that will look to reinstate these curses. We decree a curse over every demon that will look to reinstate the curse that retards the hair growth, retards the glory to be viewed in the mighty name of Jesus. And we break these things now in Jesus' name. The lies and the images of the marine kingdom, Lord, where they have dictated to us what beauty is. Father God, we come out of agreement with their standards and God God, we adhere to only your standard. We adhere, God, only to your standard. And we break every yoke of bondage. And we break every plan and every scheme. And we destroy, Father God, a female uh, pattern baldness, Father God. All of the conditions and diseases, Father God, that causes uh, here to stop growing. And we reverse them now in Jesus' name. Diodesterine imbalance, or DHT. We command you out. We command you to release the follicles. The follicles will no longer shrink. Every condition that I mentioned and even those that I don't know of, Father God, because of your sovereign authority, because of your revelatory powers of the Holy Ghost, Father God, we call the whole agenda, the whole agenda that causes them to accept the beauty of the marine kingdom to be rejected and obliterated and decimated and uh, drawn into the dry, barren place to experience drought. Father God, we shut down their conditions. We shut down their operations. We shut down their systems. We shut down their assembly lines in the mighty name of Jesus. We shut down their marketing. We shut down their programming. We shut down the frequencies by which they operate. And we break, 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 break. Right now, we command on a molecular and a cellular level for the glory of God to be returned to the women of God, Lord, as you have intended before the creations of the world, before, Lord, you decided that we would be a glimmer in our parents eye. And Father God, have them to see themselves, God, as you see them, and that is the marine kingdom would want them to be seen. Lord, have them to envision. Lord, show them how beautiful they are in you, because you don't create nothing without beauty, God. Your creative prowess is unmatchable, God. Lord, you have no rivals. And Father God, to free these women and these men from the oppression regarding their looks, Father God, cause them to see themselves like how you see them. They're so beautiful, God. You decided to die for them. You decided to die and redeem them from the curse of the law. You decided to shed your own blood, God, that we would be free. You decided to create us in your image and likeness, God, when you could find no greater to imitate. You imitated yourself, God. The greatest form of flattery is imitation, God, that you created us in your image. And in your glory, altogether wonderful, altogether beautiful, we reject these things. Father God, we come against lupus. We come against syphilis. We come against thyroid disorder. We come against hypothyroidism. We come against hyperthyroidism. We come against our sex hormones uh, imbalances, sex hormone imbalances. Father God, we come against these things that will cause uh, the hair, the glory of the women of God to cease to grow. And we command these things to start growing. Lord, we come against genetic mutations, God. We come against the demon of stress. We come against these things now in Jesus' name. And Father God, I'm asking you to restore, restore androgenetic alopecia. We reverse you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Dull, dry, brittle texture that causes the hair to split. We come against you too in Jesus' name and we break your power. 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 We don't care if it's written in our DNA, if it's outside of the scope of what God has for us to have. We break it now in Jesus' name. Fertility problems, hair issues caused by diabetes. We break acne and obesity, excessive hair growth, all of the hormonal conditions, even the Chewbacca condition, excessive hair growth. Lord, PCOS, we break, 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 break. 
In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we speak to the fingertips. We speak to the hands. We speak to the hair follicles. We speak to the system of blood flow. Father God, anywhere the enemy has found something in common in us, we command it out. We command it out that they can find nothing in common with us. Angels. Destroy their labs, destroy their factories, destroy their assembly lines in the mighty name of Jesus. We break these things now in Jesus' name. We break these things now in Jesus' name. We break these things now in Jesus' name. Now, angels, go out there and restore. Go out there and restore. Father God, we want to hear miracles tomorrow night. We want to hear the testimony of miracles, God, how you have restored unto them their glory, 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 how you have restored unto them their reproductive prowesses, Lord, how you have restored unto men, unto the men, Father God, their ability to produce their their ability, Father God, to pleasure their wives, their ability, Father God, to do what you have called them to do and be fruitful and multiply. In Jesus' name, Father God, any vitamin deficiency that is an issue, point it out. Point it out, Father God. Minerals that should be in the hair that are missing. Restore them now. Restore them now in Jesus' name. Anywhere hair growth is stunted, we break it now in Jesus' name. We break it now. Damage hair. Lord, we break, 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 break. We break it now. Restore them. Any alterations of DNA, Father God, we break it now in Jesus' name. You are the God of recompense. You are the God of restoration. And we declare that all that is out of order will be restored in Jesus' name. Let it be so. Prophets, what are we seeing? I saw a, a, a cross and I saw tons of fire, like fireballs falling from the sky. Glory to God. Father God, destroy all of their altars. Hold on. Destroy all of their altars, God. Destroy every altar where they project this wickedness against the woman of God to get them to accept the alternative. Lord, you are real God. You are a real God. You don't want nothing fake about us. You are a real God. Lord, cause us to walk in authenticity, God, in every area of our life, God, because you are a real God. And Father, cause us to understand that we can be made whole in every area of our lives. Let it be so now. In Jesus' name. Faustine or somebody else was speaking, I'm sorry. No problem, Dr. Wayne. I want to come confirm. I also saw fire when Prophet Olin was praying, but it was like fire like a whirlwind. So it was like going around, like literally like a like a whirlwind, like fire when he was praying. Um, when you were praying, Dr. Wayne, I, I saw and I heard thunder and lightning. Um, but when I was praying, I saw like a dark cloud over people's head. And I saw like a handcuff, people were like handcuffed um, to themselves. It was really weird. Like they were handcuffed, like with this, like two hands bind, bound up. Um, what else I saw? I don't remember what I saw, but whatever I saw, I prayed through. Oh, yeah. Um, I kept hearing um, this word. What was the word I kept hearing, Holy Spirit? Perversion. I kept hearing the word perversion. And the enemy comes to pervert anything that's good and true and noble. Um, so we have to continue to walk in, in the truth because that's the only way we get freedom is to walk in the truth. I yield the mic. Amen. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Anybody experience freedom while we were praying? Yes. Okay, who was that? That's me. I'm I'm so excited about my hair growing. <laughs> Glory to God. Anybody else? Hi. Anything else we um, can I hear me? I uh, when Prophet O was praying, I saw 
like big scrolls being smashed by like angels, like being shattered. That's good. Um, I also saw Prophet all walking in the spirit and he had like a shield around him and those battles, fire going on around him. And I also got delivered. I was uh, burping. Yeah, that's all. Good. Glory to God. Anybody else? Anything else we need to pray for before we go? We early tonight. It's 2.55. Um, Dr. Wayne? Mm-hmm. Um, while... Okay, after the repent the repentance prayer from Prophetess Faustina, I decided that I'm gonna get rid of the stuff in my house. So they're still on the beds. I'm still busy. So now, because I got tired, I was um, lying on the bed, and then while she was speaking again, she just spoke right. I'm not sure if it was her. While she was speaking again, I closed my eyes and I saw a woman coming into the room holding literally the things that I'm about to get rid of in frustration mm-hmm. as if to say, why are you mm-hmm. uh, getting rid of them? So I I opened my eyes quickly before I could see what he was go- what she was going to do. Okay, do me a favor, right? We're going to wait. How far is the trash from your, from, from the, the entrance of your home? Um, I live in a complex, so it's far by the gate, and I'm still in my PJs. <laughs> Hear so, me by the spirit. Uh, hear, hear me. Okay. Hear me. Go throw it out now, and then we're going to pray for you. We'll go to okay. somebody else. We'll come back to you. Go throw it out now. Right, Ma'am, how do you say your name? Noshipo. Noshipo. I'm going to start praying for you now as you go to the trash and throw it out. We okay, break go. every covenant over her life. Right now, in Jesus' name, you will not establish what God has broken. These items that you have, that these these talismans, these connection points that you're using to establish these covenants over this young woman's life, we break it now permanently. We destroy, we disannul, we disavow, we destroy your covenants and every demon that is assigned, every witch that is assigned to this young woman, you're going to take by violence tonight. You're going to experience violence tonight. You will not have inroads in her life. It ends tonight. It ends tonight. We break every yoke of bondage, every plan, and every scheme right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for unsaved husbands and unsaved wives, God. We pray for David Adelaide. Jolade David Adelaide. Father God, woo him with loving kindness, God, that he will come to the knowledge of you, God. Start pricking his heart. Start giving him revelation for all the the husbands that are unwilling to stop yielding to the flesh. Father God, send them a dream, sit on their beds, bring them to the knowledge of how dangerous this activity is. Father God, deliver them. Deliver them from ignorance. And Lord, give them the wisdom. Give them the knowledge. Give them the revelation. God, that they will understand, God. That there's a more excellent way. Lord, touch their minds. Lord, as Prophet O taught us the other night about the mind, how we need our minds reconditioned. Lord, every sexual perversive activity that we have learned, God, from watching pornography, from experimenting, God, we break these things now in the mighty name of Jesus. We break these things now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we break these things now. Every shrine, every family altar, every accursed object, every dream catcher, every idol that is in the house that is drawing spirits to our abode, expose it. We break it now in Jesus' name. We crush these idols now in Jesus' name. Bring it to our recollection. Father, sex toys, sex toys. Sex toys, accoutrements, accoutrements. They have to go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to the wounds of women 
Let life spring forth right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every demon that is occupying a space that was not intended for you. Every body demon, you got to go, you got to go, you got to go. Asmodeus, I call you by name. You got to go. All perversion, all perversion, all spirits of masturbation, all perversive, all strange flesh that is looking to engage with the people of God. We banish you. We destroy you. We break your power. Hours. We command you not to enter. We put a barricade up in the realm of the spirit that you cannot circumvent, that you cannot go around. And Father, give us the willpower to say no. Even when it's hard, God, that we will yield our members to you. That we will yield our members to you. That we will yield our members to to you, oh God, that we will yield our members to you. Lord, release the breaker anointing, God. Release the breaker anointing that is reconfiguring the way that we think about sexuality, God. Teach us afresh. Show us anew. Help us to reject the things, the ways, and the perversion of the world. In Jesus' name. Father God, bring restoration. Father God, bring restoration, 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 bring restoration. Lord, release one third of the angels in heaven right now to wage war for the people of God, wage war for their souls, wage war for their children, wage war for their their reproduction, God, wage war that they may be fruitful and multiply. I hear you, Holy Ghost. I command every spirit spouse and your children to die in Jesus' name. Receive these certificates of divorcement, all perverse, all perversion, all strange flesh, all strange activity. We break it now in the mighty name of Jesus. We break these things now in Jesus' name. We break it now. Lord, we have the mind of Christ. Help us, help us to see ourselves like you see us. Lord, we know we're not rejected. You send your son to die for people who did not even love him, those who would reject him in the future, God. And he still came. That is the epitome of love. Um, Kashia, if that's how to say your name, you need to start addressing your husband although he's unsafe right now, as a man of God. Prophetically, speak that over his life daily. Call him man of God, even to his face. Call him man of God. Women, call your husband, your unsafe husband, your straddling defense husband. Call them man of God, men of God, prophetically. Men, I call your wife a woman of God prophetically. Okay, good. Good, glory to God. Father God, thank you for saving him. Lord, I'm asking that you release a blessing over Kashia's life and over her family. Lord, every woman that was obedient tonight, God, release a blessing over their life. Father God, return all the money they ever spent on beauty. Return it unto them. Yeah, I am prophetically declaring, Lord, that you will reveal unto them every dollar, every dime, every nickel they've spent in beauty over the years of their lives, Father God. Return it unto them in Jesus' name. Let the recompense begin now. In Jesus' name. Woman of God, are you back? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else until she comes back? Anybody else? Anybody else saw anything else that we need to address? Yes, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I saw um, the eye gates, the sense gates, the ear gates being cleansed by the blood of Yeshua as you were praying over sexual perversion and so many other um, prayer points that you had. And then the Lord Thank also you, asked me, Yes, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And the Lord also showed me um, that there should be a, a distinct um, prayer for singles because we've been praying for marriages and women who, or just couples who are about to get married, couples that have been married that were going through different things, but also to pray for 
the strength of the singles to hold on and to do the same thing, getting rid of all those accessories and um, things that they may have been dabbling into that could um, affect their marriage when that um, the real spirit spouse comes along, as Prophet Odalyn was praying about as well. Thank you. Amen. Prophet O, do you want to pray about um, the single folks? Yes, sure, absolutely. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the anointing. Father, we just pray for uh, the singles, Lord God, those that are waiting to get married. Father God, we just pray a special grace, a special blessing over them. In Jesus' name, Father, give them the grace to wait until you send the right person, Father God. But Father, while they're waiting on you, Father God, we pray that there will be a heavy connection with you, Father God. I pray that you would, Father, submerge them in your glory, that they would meet you like never before, that they would hear you like never before, God, that they would be led by you, Father, like never before. While they're waiting, Father God, build them up, Father yes, God. God. Strengthen them, Father God, where they have been torn down, Father. May you restore and make new. May you heal. May, may, may you uplift them, Father God. May you make them better than before, God, in Jesus' name. So when their spouse come, they would be ready. Ready, Father God, ready for marriage, ready to go through the journey and the process in Jesus' name. So, Father, cover them even now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any attack against their mind that will cause them to feel inadequate, that will cause them to walk in low self-esteem that will cause them uh that would tempt them to to compromise and settle we come against that right now in jesus name they will not settle they will not settle father but they would wait for the promise they would wait for the promise god so strengthen their hearts god and every attack against them let it break now in jesus name we block it we break it we cancel it now Yes and amen. Yes, God. Yes, God. Is our sister back yet? No, Sipo. No, okay, Sipo. Let's, let me go no, wait Sipo. On her. Are you back yet? No, Sipo. You back? I just love that name. I just had to try to say it. <laughs> no, Sipo. I don't think she's back yet. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Anybody else that saw anything that uh, testimonial or something that we need to um, uh, cover in prayer. Anybody else? LaJoyce. Hold on, Tazanik. LaJoyce. Where is... Uh, yep, Lou, I'm here. Uh, Lou, anything, anything we need to cover? Uh, no. Okay, anybody else? Hey, Dr. Wayne. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to just, you know, let you know, like, you know, these prayers, like, or, you know, I definitely felt the whirlwind that you guys talked about the fire when Prophet Olin was praying. And the Lord just, he brings me here right on time because um, I hadn't been able to attend uh, in a few days. But um, when you prayed about like hair and like um, the weave and, and stuff like that, like, I've been basically struggling with hair loss for like the past two years um with mineral deficiency and all of that um so these prayers are definitely right on time and as you guys are just praying um the holy spirit was revealing to me that um there's incest on my family bloodline as a generational curse um and so yeah uh, thank you thank you for your prayers father god right now in the name of jesus all of us anywhere in our bloodline father that there is incest we speak against it now in the mighty name of jesus our children shall not be victims what is your daughter's name it will not be our portion it will no longer be our children's portion we stop the flow of these things right now in the mighty name of jesus in the realm of the spirit we turn Terminate their actions, their activity, the efficacy in our lives right now in Jesus' name. It will not be our portion. 
We break these things now in Jesus' name. Our sister, I'm afraid to say your name because I'm about to butcher it. Osipo. Woman of God, are you back yet? Saribeso yorobo shete. Rabababa yaraba kotorobo satarabashi. Oh, rebese ye rebe. Araba kotorobo se. Rebe shayaraba. Lord, release your spirit. Arebe. Sania Joanne McQuilkin. Sania Joanne McQuilkin. Sania Joanne McQuilkin. Father God, take the shame away. Take the shame away. Father God, blunt the consequences, Lord. Release your mercy and your grace over her life, God. And we declare that this child would be born without incident. It shall not. It will not. Lord, bring freedom. Bring freedom. Bring freedom. I don't know if that's the name of the child. But I was attempting to say bring freedom, but I'm hearing it be repeated in the realm of the spirit as if that's the name. Don't go to God. Don't take what I'm saying. I'm just telling you what I'm hearing. Lord, bring freedom into this world. Bring freedom into this world. Bring her here safely, God. Bring her here safely, God, without incident. And Father, I'm asking you right now to give this child all of the support that she will need. Bring freedom into this world. Lord, make this situation a safe place and a safe situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. No, 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 Sifo, no, Shipo, are you back? Lord Jesus, forgive me. I'm destroying this lady's name. Anybody else? Apolloni, how you doing? Jody Ann, how you doing? Anybody get freedom while we were praying? Arebesa yaraba seta rebeso yorobo chantika haidon rababa yaraba sokoto rebesa yaraba rebese Lord you are the healer He said I am the Lord that healeth thee Lord release your bomb and Gilead over this room tonight and bring these people into freedom and healing in every area of our life Lord anywhere that we've been molested and carrying out, carrying around the stigma of molestation, carrying around the, the stigma of child rape, carrying around the stigma of being forced to have abortions. Father God, we remove these garments right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We remove these garments right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We remove these garments. Okay, she's back. Thank you, Father. Woman of God, how you doing? I'm all right. How are you? <laughs> okay, so the items that you... Um, that you got rid of are sexual in nature? No, there's just hair, hair things, hair ties, synthetic hair, um, syn uh, hair uh, decor, like m mascara, um, you know, makeup. I don't and have so, makeup. I had mascara and like concealer and stuff like that. Okay. So you're saying when you closed your eyes and you dozed off into the realm of sleep for a minute, you saw a spirit spouse trying to bring the items back into the house? Yes, it was a woman. That woman came in, dashing in the room, and um, she looked frustrated, and she was holding the things that I still have with me. I, I had them still on my bed, and it was like it was frustrated. So because she came rushing, I opened my eyes, and I realized that he was. She was actually saying, "Why are you throwing these things away? <clears throat> Why are you getting rid of them?" Okay, I want yes. you to leave your mic open. We're okay. gonna pray for you right now. Okay, Father God, right now, because of her obedience, I declare that every demon that once had access to her life. You're going to let it go right now. Every generational, ancestral, every spirit of delay, stagnation, backwardness, all of it out now. In Jesus' name, and we declare that you no longer have access as these accursed objects are no longer in her house. Father, just like when the Ark of the Covenant rested in Obed-Edom's house and that house was blessed, I declare a blessing over her life because of her obedience. I hear you, Holy Ghost. 
Father, anywhere that we have items, the remains of human beings in our house through these products. The spirit of premature death has to go. It has to go. Anywhere we have aided and abetted, Lord, for our fashion and for our beauty, the sake of the lives of other human beings, it has to go out let her go. Let her go. Let not the blood be crying out against us for the That's sake of makeup. Says. It has to go. It has to go. It has to go. I break, break, break. Let the blood of Jesus speak for her. I command your daughter to be free in every area of her life. Woman of God, are you married? No, I'm single. Um... Mm-hmm. But I'm in a relationship, but I'm single, like, in terms of I'm not married, yes. Okay. Father God, every impediment to a godly marriage, I break it now. I break it now. Father God, reveal the nature and the motive of this individual. Father God, cause her to see what she couldn't see before. Open her eyes, Lord God, in areas. Show them the, Show her the intent of his heart. The Bible says when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing and obtaineth favor, God. Favor. Lord, let nothing be missing, nothing lacking, nothing out of order in her life. We command Jezebel to go. Jezebel, you got to go. We break your power, Jezebel. We apprehend you and your children and hate Ahab. Anything, God. You're going to let it go. You cannot visit our house ever again, Jezebel. Go kick rocks with open toe shoes on. Go kick rocks with your red bottoms. But fire for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the fire of God be attached to your bosom in Jesus' name. And let freedom be the woman's portion right now. Let freedom be her portion. I declare for whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Let freedom be her portion. Let the freedom, freedom. God bless you, woman of God. Sabrina, open your mic. Kapo rebe sa ya raba koto robo sete. Raba she ye rebe soto robo boboi. Raba ba 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 ya raba sekete. Lord, I see cycles of curses in her bloodline. Let it go. Let it go. We break these curses right now. The blood of dead ancestors will no longer speak for her. We break it, break it, break it, break it, break it out. Let it go. Let it go. I speak to her scalp. I speak to her follicles. I speak to her hair. Total restoration. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, let the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and add no sorrow rest upon her. In Jesus' name, let it be so. Let it be so. Thank you. Let it be so. Sister Faustini, you got anything else? We good to go? Be good. Glory to God. I'm pissed now. You don't, you're welcome. I don't like demons. I can't stand them. I know they didn't like me. Let me tell you a funny story. You can tell Dr. Wayne I was throwing up. Doka. Glory to God. Listen, I'm in the car just thinking about how much I hate them jokers, and I'm saying in my head, I can't stand y'all <laughs> demons. I hate y'all. Um, Haribesa. Okay. Um... Them jokers said, we hate you too. I told Erica and she started laughing. I can't stand y'all. Let me let y'all right now. You're not going to attack my sisters no more. You're not going to attack my brothers no more. Out! In the mighty name of Jesus, I release the fire of God in every... Mm. Yes, God, I destroy all familial, 
altars right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I break, 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 break. All family totems, all dynastic principles. I break these things now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every creeping, crawling thing, every demon looking for an opportunity, we amputate all of your members. You're going to crawl back to the pit on your stomach. We decapitate Jezebel and all her daughters and all of the serpents that run with her. We kill them now in Jesus' name. Every sapling, every tool, every item being used by the kingdom of darkness. We break. We break. We break. Lord, let the anointing that breaks yokes of bondage, God, go to their homes. Lord, send your spirit and your angels to these homes. Send your spirit and your warfare angels. We're not patty caking with no demons. You're going to come out of the lives and the bodies, their affairs, their children, their endeavors, their businesses, their ministries. I'm hearing the word sickle cell. Father God, we command every cell in our body to take instructions from you, and we reject the sickle cell and the sickle cell trait. We break the power of these demons over our bloodline, over our blood, over the systems of our body. We declare that the systems of our body are demon-free. We will not be a demon hotel for these jokers. These jokers don't pay no rent. They don't pay no mortgage. You can't come to our house. You can't use our bodies at temples. We crush and we destroy all of the works of the marine kingdom in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Arebe Yaraba. I speak into the past, the current, and the history of Prophetess Marjorie Daka. And I release the fire of God on every ancient altar, every ancient altar, every ancient altar, every ancient altar that is projecting wickedness in her life. Yes, God. We break it, 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 break it. We break it, break it, break it, break it, break it, break it, break it. We sever, sever, sever. We destroy, we crush, we obliterate. I hear you, Holy Ghost. Come on! Pisca will not be our portion. We will never enter our promised land. We will not have delayed results in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let these things come to pass speedily without delay. Lord, for the unmarried Father God, remove every spouse that is standing in the way. Their accoutrements, their altars, Father God, their sacrifices, their dowry, their jewelry, and every gift that they have given the men and the women of God. It has to end tonight. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Right now. In Jesus' name. Robosatara, Prophet, or you got anything else? Arebesa yarebeso koto robosata. No, sir. Rabba baba ba yarabasa. Rabba baba ba yarabasa. God is doing something right now. Robosata yarabasa. Rebesa yarabaso roboshe. Arebeka yaraba. Rebesa rabaso. Roboshete. Y'all gonna die tonight, and the people of God are gonna be free. Right now in Jesus' name. 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 I come against anxiety over Tiana. All spirits of fear. All spirits of fear. Father God, while you're healing her soul, heal her body. Every spirit of infirmity out of Tiana right now in Jesus' name. Out. 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 Out, 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 out. I crush sickness, disease, conditions, maladies, torments, and afflictions. I touch every mind control spirit that is formulating her thoughts, every automatic thought. Every woman that operates in fear, put a one in the chat. Every man that operates in fear, put a one in the chat. We going, we going after some stuff real quick. 
Arebesa, Arebeso, Koto, Robo, Shataya, Rabase, Arebese, every spirit of fear, I wrap you up. I wrap you up. I bind you up in chains of fire. Rabababa, Yarabaso, Koto, Robo, Rebebebebe, Yarabababai, Ore, Yarabaso, Koto, Robo, Sheketa, Rebesi. I break fear over the lives, over God's hand servants over god made servants i crush fear in their lives we crush you to dust out 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 all manner of fear out 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 afraid to prophesy afraid i'm gonna be wrong when i prophesy afraid i'm gonna say the wrong thing i'm afraid to go and walk in freedom i'm afraid to establish businesses i'm afraid to correct somebody that god is telling me to correct every aspect of fear i crush it now in jesus name Jeremiah 33.3, three. what does that say? And I will answer I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Thank you. God is saying, put your trust in him and fear no one but him. A godly fear. We break every yoke. People are afraid to fail. People are afraid to fall. If you fall, get up. If you fall, get up. Nobody's condemning you. Get up and walk in freedom. Step out in faith. Minister to whom God tells you to minister to. Establish the ministries and the businesses. Do do it, do it, do it. Every spirit of fear, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of fear. Arebesa, rebe, kataya raba. Rebeso koto robo, shita rebesi. Arebe yaraba so koto shata. Every spirit that came in because of tattoos. You gotta go. I don't care if it's a scripture, you're coming out now. Every blood ritual that has given the enemy access, out, out in Jesus' name. Angels pursue, overtake, and destroy. I hear you, Holy Ghost. I hear you, Holy Ghost. I command the treasure chest to float from the oceans, from the bottom of the seas. I command every satanic bank, every satanic bank to open up. And every treasure chest that has our initials on them, angels, Yes, overtake, overtake, recover, and deliver. Deliver these things. Whether you got to do it to bank accounts or everything else, whatever it is you got to do, the order is to restore the people of God. Restore the people of God. I fell asleep and dreamed a man was on the foot of my bed. What is your name, Yvonne? I command that spirit spouse to vacate her premises. You will not visit her. You have been divorced, oh boy. You got to go. You have no access to Yvonne or the carry. Let her go. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus, you will not visit her. Rabba se yerebe so koto robo sata. Rabba baba yaraba so robo seketa rebeshi. Every spirit spouse activity, every demonic infestation, every monitoring spirit, every surveilling spirit, every spirit of night terrors. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. Every witchcraft incantation and spell that has been released over the women of God. I break, 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 break. All night terrors. I command all of your devices and your tools, all of your witchcraft accoutrements to break, to sever, and to be destroyed. Now, God, I pronounce a blessing that no man can stop from coming to fruition. Yeah, because I'm a G like that. I prophesy over every person that is here now at 3.28 a.m., faithfully listening to be set free, Lord, that everything that they've prayed about, even the things that they have forgotten that they prayed about, Lord, grant them the desires of their heart once it lines up with your will. Lord, send resources, send blessings, send healing, send restoration yes, to every area of their lives. 
Let nothing be missing. Let nothing be missing. God, send your angels to conduct deliverances while they sleep. Send your spirit to conduct deliverances while you sleep, God. Let freedom be their portion and let it be so right now in Jesus' name. If y'all don't stop me, I'll pray till 6 o'clock. No, Jesus. stop, 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 stop. Mm -mm, that's it. Profito. I don't have nothing, man of God. Are we good? Can we go now? Yes, sir. Holy Ghost, can we go? Holy Ghost, can we go? Let me. Uh, Who's Dr. that? Wayne, me, LaJoyce. Um, since you've been praying, I keep hearing low self-esteem. And I was like, oh, okay, Lord, what? why do I keep hearing low self-esteem? Because you're supposed this? to tell me so I could pray for it. Yes. <laughs> he was saying that that low self-esteem is used as a tool for many of us not being able to let go of Marine King items because we've been indoctrinated since little girls to believe that we need these items to look pretty or to be viewed as beautiful. So that's what I Come got. on. None of y'all look like nine, nine miles of bad roads. Stop it. In Jesus' name. Father God, I come against the spirit of low self-esteem. I come against all the times that we were rejected or felt rejected because we thought we weren't pretty enough, that we did we did not uh, we were not accepted because we didn't have what the men like or what the women like. Father God, we reject those notions now. Father God, our esteem is in you, Lord. Fill us up with God esteem, Lord. Let us be esteemed with your glory, God. Cause us to walk in the places in the manner which, with our head up, Father God, without pride and arrogance, to represent your kingdom. Let these things be so in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, God. Let it be so now. Anything else before we go? Yes, Dr. Wayne, this is LaShonda. Um, um, I want to pray about strengthening our armor. Well, I want you to pray about strengthening our armor. <laughs> um, I think I, I mentioned to you the other day how I, I rose up in bed early in the morning and something like hit me in my chest. Um, but when Prophet Odelin was praying and he prayed about chest pain or something, I felt this flutter. <laughs> Uh, when he said that, and then um, it went away. But then just as as you were praying a few minutes ago for something, I felt it again. So I just want to... Uh, In the name of Jesus, every demon operating around the heart, every arrow that is in the heart, come out. We pluck these arrows out right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we've been warfaring for 26 days. I'm asking you to restore our armor in the mighty name of Jesus. Restore all of our armor, Father God, to withstand the impact of these blows by the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, restore us and let your glory be our rear guard. Let nothing sneak up on us. No ambushments in the midnight hour. No covenants reestablished. We break all of those things right now in Jesus' name. Anybody else? Dr. Wing? Oh, God. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so um, there was deliverance that took place with me last year. That's how I met Faustina and April and Alex. But after that, we were throwing away things that um, that that is heavily um, put in the stores, you know, consumerism. So there was these Valentine's Day vases that my husband got for me with flowers. While he was throwing them away, I, I heard a male voice yelling, no. And I was throwing away all of the polish as well. And um, I've, I've heard this woman yell the same thing. No, no. But they're like, no, <laughs> you, 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 can't, you can't throw these things because that is how we're going to um, have a hold on you. And, of course, we threw away all the condoms and everything else. And, but, um, yeah, um, uh, it's, it's insane just how much we buy these things that they're heavily advertised to to um keep us bonded right um it's 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 not funny i mean just think no, about not. about these millions millions upon millions of women thinking that you know just just cuz you have these things that does not that does not um 
add value to you. Like you're already valuable by breathing, right? Because mm-hmm. he he gives us he gives us the breath that we breathe. He breathes into us. Is that not enough? So mm-hmm. you don't need to have no men. You don't need to have no women to to um, pour into you when you already have God the Father in heaven breathing life into you who makes your heartbeat, who makes the blood flow. And gosh, (laughs) um, it's, oh, and um, uh, God, God, forgive me. I've, I've allowed makeup for my girls, you know, because my oldest, she's, she's very artistic and, Without them knowing, I threw away the makeup, I threw away the polish, I threw... There's so much that I threw away that I don't want them to grow up into. And just, you know, we've we've decided to homeschool them, we, we are homeschooling them, but they don't know what COVID is. When they have family up north um, in Wainwright, who, whose kids, whose cousins, their cousins know about coronavirus they know covid they know what a lockdown means two weeks Mm -hmm. maybe months they've had lockdowns up there because it's so isolated and they they're there's so much that they don't know and i thank god every single day for them not knowing the things that i grew up with and um it's just insane Mm -hmm. how indoctrinated Mm -hmm. And so heavily blinded that the enemy has has um, deceived people, mm-hmm, whole mm-hmm. civilizations. He's he's been able to <laughs> instill in them. Okay, give me this, and you'll have power. Amen. Amen. Listen, give we gotta me. wrap it up because it's, <laughs> I, I gotta be up at seven o'clock. <laughs> so okay. we gotta wrap this up. I'm All right, I appreciate your, your your context, Lolo. You know I love you, right? Wait, no, Lolo. What? I know you do. <laughs> okay. Why are you I, was about to, me, I, was, I was about to jump on a plane okay, and come over there. Please just leave me be. Don't come All right, me. cool. I just I just gotta I'm make sure twinkly, we good. I'm a t I'm a twinkly I'm a twinkly ballerina little little chihuahua, okay? Oh the Lord Jesus. <laughs> anyway, folks, um we gotta go, but I wanna just make these announcements before we go. So on Saturday, we are having the what do we have on Saturday? The Marine Kingdom's effect on your resources. We're going in on Saturday. We're gonna expose it all. And then you're gonna decide how much of it you're gonna take and apply it to your life. There's still space in the class. If you wanna attend, hit the QR code. Uh uh, the mentorship. Filling up. We're not gonna have room much much longer. Pray and ask God if that is something that you need. If you need it, you need uh, godly accountability, you need some guidance and some wisdom, we're not going to be able to do one-on-one uh, uh, much longer. Just We just can't do it. Um, prophetic training, developing the emerging prophet. Come on, y'all, let's get trained up so we can shut these jokers down like Joseph Foster. Yes, I called his name and others. All right, to get trained up, our prophetess Faustina Fire is going to be uh, uh, facilitating Prophet O, cooler than the other side of the pillow. He's going to be teaching as well. And myself, we will be teaching and imparting and doing what we need to do to get y'all ready. All of the Deliverance Chronicles social media assets, if you are not following us, you're being left. Let me stop. Just follow us. Hey, TikTok, can I get some follows, please? Let me get some TikTok love over there. Um, Deliverance Chronicles is having a baby. This is just so we can get the equipment that we need to do the documentary. And if you're giving, if you want to give by these means, hit that QR code. Uh, if you believe, and I know we did, we did damage tonight. Uh, you believe that you want to help me bless some of the people that helped us tonight. You can give by cash app. You can go to the website, deliverancechronicles.org slash giving. You can give there. And you can go to PayPal and you can give there. And if you want to give to Profit O, it is dollar sign, Jersey Strong, one, two, five. Bro, I know your stuff by heart. Okay? And for Faustina, it is dollar sign, Faustina. Okay? So if you want to bless them directly, fine. 
Let's give all the blessed Deliverance Chronicles. Thank you. Thank you for all the... Oh, I got to read the, the message from the lady that we gave to last night. Where did I send that? I think I got it. Let me read it to y'all. I was trying to get her on here, and I don't know what happened, but I'm going to read you what she said, and then we can go home. Or go to sleep. I hope you're home. She said, I just woke up. I truly apologize. I thought she was sleeping in the car, but apparently not. Me and my daughter fell asleep after eating. We did not have to. You did not have to do that, Wayne. I'm in complete tears right now and at complete loss for words. Thank you so much for the from the bottom of my heart. I actually have enough money to afford two bus tickets back home to Newton, Kansas City for me and my daughter. Thank you so much. So listen, your giving is not in vain. Your, your giving is helping people out. Your giving is establishing the kingdom of God. Your giving is helping us to get the things that we need uh, so we can build this kingdom. So I just want to tell y'all, man, I love y'all, man. I really do. We do this. Don't, trust me. Prophet O and I and Sister Faustina, we like to sleep. So we don't do this because we have insomnia. We do this out of love. Right, Prophet O? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't even know if he can hear me. Absolutely. Yeah, you know. And Sister Faustina, she got to be up in five minutes to handle her business. And so we do this because of love. We love y'all. And we want to just say good night, okay? If you want to give, now is a good time to give, but we got to go. Good night, everybody. Good night. Love you all. Good, good night. night. Love, you. love you all. Good night. Good night, sweet Wes. Love you all. All right. Good night, everybody.